Hello, everybody. Spike here. I'm Kel. I'm Amanda, and the Mexican pizza is back. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. What the makes pizza. the pizza Mexican pizza? It's something Taco Bell makes. It's just a Mexican pizza. Oh, okay. You know, Taco Bell takes like 15 ingredients and then just changes the configuration on yep. them. Like when you get a Lego set and you're like, now it's a ship. Now it's a building. Now it's a car. Now a it's Mexican a Mexican pizza is one of the superior configurations. A Taco Bell Bionicle. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, All everyone. Right. Well, but I am eating I a crunch wrap this. right now. Before we get uh -huh. started, before we get started. Everybody, um, um, everybody, everybody, our crowdfund for the Lizard Prince and other South American stories is in its final week officially. If you have not backed it yet, please do so. If you can't back it or won't back it, please spread the word. We would love to get our creators more pay raises and get all the way to our first stretch goal, which is the Lizard Enamel Pen. That would be really fucking cool. He's very cute. He's a cute little guy. Uh, He's adorable. He's adorable. I am going to go to Twitter and I'm going to tell everybody we're live and then we can just do whatever the fuck it is we do. I'm eating a Crunchwrap Supreme. Uh, Everyone here is not going to SPX, right? I wish right. I was, but I'm not. Yeah. Uh, I went to uh, Rose City last week. Uh, so but, how'd, you uh, find, uh, how'd you huh? find it? How'd you find it? I mean... I wouldn't go if I didn't live like a 10 minute walk away. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. We talked about uh, that. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. It's, it's adequate. Um, that's, mm -hmm. that's how I always describe it. It is adequate. Um, I will continue to go as long as I live here. Um, I, I don't know if I'll keep going if I move. Uh, is, is anyone here a weird scrubbing noise? I'm be kill drawing. That might be my pen. Yeah. Oh, I'm drawing. Okay. Okay. Uh, or Just more specifically, I'm toning uh, my comic. So that's my pen going script, 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 script. All right. Sorry. Yeah, I have, a, I have a, a surprise for everyone here. And once again, it's one of those deals where it's just for folks who listen to The Geek Show. They get to find out before anyone else. I am going to a convention next week, sort of, kind of. There is this the record label one? Because um, you did already tell the Geek Show that. Oh, I, well, these people are still Geek Show. If you go to howlingpages.com, you will see that it is a shop in Chicago that sells in graphic novels, indie comics, printed art, manga, art and illustration stuff, features local creators, all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, they are having a very... Do you hear the cops? They're coming for me. You hear the no, cops? no. Yeah, finally. Finally. Of all the, the times to be caught with liquid latex on my foot and cheese on my face. <laughs> but yeah, it is for the anniversary party for Tone Deaf Records, which is like their neighbor. On September 24th, I will be heading over along with, and here's the name I'm sure a lot of folks haven't heard in a while. Devil's Do. We will just have a little a little tent somewhere and it'll be very informal, What's very Devil's casual. Do? Oh, uh, wow. They're a comic company that I'm surprised is still in business. Um, yeah, wow. Let, yeah, let's not get they, too sassy about them. But I mean, that's facts. Uh, they did not yeah. pay a lot of people. Um, and just general like controversy. So I'm su also surprised that they're going and exist continuously. Yeah. So just a more detailed. My fingers uh, are in my ear. I go la 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 la. <laughs> a more detailed description for oh, folks who maybe kind leg. of weren't around in comics 10, 12, 15 years ago. Devil's Due was for a while the largest Chicago based publisher they really hit gold they they found a rich vein when they won the rights to comic adaptations of if i am not mistaken gi joe which was their big thing for a while they were publishing comic gi joe comics and they got over pretty well on that there were other things they published but the gi joe comics are predominantly they, they also they had before. family guy comics which i think were doing pretty well too at the yeah. time so they were doing the licensed floppy comics, I should note here, the kind you find in comic shops. This this significantly predates, you know, Random House and Simon and & Schuster and them getting involved. And 
from what I have heard, they grew a little too fast. And when they did not get, and this is all second, third, fourth hand, you know, your mileage may vary. I could very easily be wrong about this. <laughs> they grew a little too fast. Uh, they rented offices they couldn't afford. The sales did not meet expectations for a few months. And the next thing they knew, they were not so much out of business, but they sunk beneath the waves for several years. They resurfaced a few years ago on Kickstarter, of all places, where they did what I refer to in my head. Uh, I don't know if anyone else calls it this fire sale Kickstarters, which is it was clearly older runs, uh, books that they had in a warehouse somewhere. It was not new material. And they were also offering perks and bonuses that were things like old convention banners and stuff that they clearly saw no need for anymore. And I thought when I saw this, it was offloading. I thought somebody was just getting ready to get out of comics because I, I've seen this before. I've seen publishers getting ready to just leave comics. And I, I thought that's what I was witnessing. But uh, no, they got into I'm, NFTs a while back. <laughs> I'm so. surprised that they could do a, a fire sale on Kickstarter without Kickstarting something. They um, reprinted old how to get into comic stuff and old, I believe they had a character. If you want to Google this, this is probably the easiest way to find them. They had a character named Mercy Sparks. Sparks spelled S-P-A-R-X. And I I think it was either an angel that was also a demon or a demon masquerading as an angel or it was something like that. It was it, it, it felt very uh naughty's nineties where, you know, she had like pigtails and stuff. So if you want to uh, Mercy Sparks, you'll probably find Okay, them. so so technically the Kickstarter was for like reprinting that, but they were yeah. getting rid of old stock. Okay. Yeah. So uh yeah, that that's kind of what I've heard from them and then I thought they were getting out, but then they started doing M NFTs and I was like, oh <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know, like whatever. There, that's who's going to be at Howling Pages with me <laughs> uh, next Saturday. So that, that'll make for some interesting. Smell that rainforest burn. <laughs> so yeah, I will be at Howling Pages in Chicago next Saturday. You know, for maybe five, ten seconds, I'll be selling maybe a few books. If you are in Chicago, feel free to come on down. This is me being very masked and coated in a thin slime of antibacterial goo. You're gonna be uh, like Danny DeVito and Always Sunny. Like, yeah. I must be pure. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm vaxxed, I'm boosted, uh, but I am a natural warrior, so I probably Did you get be... the, the new vaccine? I don't know what qualifies as new. I got one There's a couple a new, of like, months ago. But not everybody qualifies to get it. Yeah. Okay. I I got a booster a couple months ago, the same time I got my shingles vaccine. So I don't Sorry, know. Sorry, I'm on okay, the floor. So, uh, uh, okay, so you didn't get the new, new booster. You just got the uh, a booster. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that's where I am right now. And it's it's. I, I made an appoint doctor's appointment today to get the new booster. And also, I apparently qualify for a pneumonia booster. Um, okay uh which uh yeah i didn't know there was a pneumonia booster um and mm. until i um uh ended up uh until my doctor was like hey do you want a pneumonia vaccine and i was oh, like pneumonia oh. i thought you said ammonia and i was like i'm so confused yeah uh <laughs> Pneumonia, uh, it, yeah, so it's apparently if you are, um, a, have asthma or some other breathing problem, um, you can get a pneumonia vaccine. Okay, makes sense. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. I will not be at SPX, which is happening this weekend, and that makes me sad. I think this is the, uh the third year I have not done SPX, which is one of my favorite cons ever. And maybe I'll do 2024. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Ryan, uh, Kel's mouth moves because Kel's mic is picking up audio. They're audio yeah. based. Hi Ryan. Yeah. So sometimes when Kel, uh, when Spike or I talk loud, 
it leaks through Kel's headphones and the mic picks it up. Yes. Our flapping uh, or or easy. or if I do like scritchy scritch scritch uh with my pen, uh sometimes that picks up too. Yeah. Sounds like um, a sensitivity sensitivity? Sensitivity issue. Every time I have tried to adjust it, it like if I turn it down enough to not get the scritchy pen, uh it cuts me talking out. Um, right. It's it's because so... um it's because the the mic you have now is a dynamic mic and it has it, those mm -hmm. things you kinda have to have as close to your mouth as possible because they uh do reduce a lot of sound around them. Um so uh they aren't they are not sensitive. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, it feels like Oh, also, shit. Yeah, I, I mentioned this on a previous Geek Show, but I'll also be sending Andrea Purcell to Barcelona. So I guess Iron Circus is sort of creeping back into cons, despite the fact I will not be at SPX this weekend. Although it does feel like 2024 is going to be the year everyone just fucking gives up and starts doing cons, cons again for real. Like, that's just yeah. what it feels like. like I feel like gone. people are already doing that. Yeah, I think, uh -huh. like, next year... The whole sort of I don't want to get sick and die thing. People will be like, get over it and just expect you to go anyway. It's, I'm not thrilled, but I know it's not going to get any better. I mean, no I one's making that. you go. Yeah, but at the same time, people are going to start like inviting me. And well, then you'd say to... no. Yeah. I, just, I mean, <laughs> I don't. I'm not great. I'm not great at saying no. Is a well, problem. you are. <laughs> Bullshit. One. Uh, two. <laughs> You weren't going to do cons anyway. Yeah, but there are cons that, like, I do want to do. They're, they're few and far between. I'm much more selective about cons these days. And I do have a track record of pretty much 80% of the time I do a con, I get sick. And that's the thing that worries me. Like, even, you know, well, pre-corona. So, well, um, masks are great. Oh, um, yeah. oh, I'll be wearing one. Don't worry. I'm going to yeah, basically uh, be wearing masks for the rest of my life in specific situations because it was just yep. nice not getting the flu for like three years yeah yeah i'm uh, going to be masked at every i mean i was I, I, I did get flu the flu vaccine each year but still like that didn't stop me from getting the flu previous years so the mask sure was nice yeah i'll be masked at every con i do from this day forward in all likelihood you always get sick at like from like every con yeah, I do. And it sucks and I hate it. <laughs> so it's probably it's one because of the things I always uh, think about. Probably it's karma uh, for stealing all my gel. Yes, all of uh, your sanitizer. Spike, uh you should um get a P one hundred mask. Uh I they're great. Those. I have those. Oh, you so you have the big giant filter ones. I can't get oh. those. I cannot get those. I'm too claustrophobic. I tried one and I freaked the fuck out. <laughs> I just, I just, the thing, the plan now is I'm going to be doing conventions. I know we'll have a significant return, not just monetarily, but also profile wise. So ALA is back on the table. The American Library Association stuff, that's back on the table. Any European cons we get invited to, okay, sure. That will definitely be important in establishing more business tie stuff. If it's local I can probably do it because that doesn't require getting in a train and then getting in a plane, which I'll I think right back. I need something to drink, Blah. which I think quite frankly is a, a big contributor to me getting sick every single time sitting in an airport, I think. And then sitting in a plane, I think has a, has a serious, con is a serious contributory factor to that. And if I just have to, you know, get in an Uber for 10 minutes and I mask the entire time and I'm not touching everything, I'm less likely to get sick. So, you know, I'll do cake. Maybe, maybe I'll do C2, E2. Maybe. Um, I can see myself doing other cute little local shows like the one I'm doing Saturday. I'm just going to tone down. SPX also. I, I really like SPX. I'm... I'm on the fence about a lot that were automatic. Of course, I'm doing it shows in the past, though. Like uh, ECCC, I'm, I'm a little on the fence about that one. I mean, I still make a lot of money there. Um, just read pop is awful. Yeah. Um, so, just, like, you know, maybe would... send Andrea to ECCC or Amanda, but you don't have to go. What I'd have to do is I'd have to consult because, hey, everyone, you know, the most exciting part of comics spreadsheets, I'd have to consult the spreadsheets I kept a few years ago about the sort of return on investment for various cons because there was a year 
welcome. There was a year I was doing a whole bunch of different cons and I was keeping really close tabs on whether they were financially worth the, the issue because cons are worth more than like the actual time people spent behind a table at a show. There's a lot of logistics that need to happen and there's a lot of packing and shipping and making sure everything gets back in one piece. And inevitably some stuff turns into scratch and ding that doesn't get sold at the show and has to come back to the office and be sold to scratch and ding. So, you know, we take a minor loss on that. And also sort of one of those invisible costs is time. I have to make sure that it's worth the investment of filling out the form and interfacing with the people running it. And there are a lot of shows who do not pass that test. ECCC has been borderline for a while. We do make money there, but at the same time, like <laughs> read up is horrible. It's getting, it seems to be going down a road. I have seen other conventions go down and this is old lady spike is going to be talking now. Uh, there have been shows I've done specifically. There was one show in Arizona that I remember with crystal clarity. I did that show with uh, Daniel Corsetto and Randy Milholland and it was in, I want to say Phoenix. It's Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix. I went Comic once. Con. I went once and said never again. Um, yeah. Phoenix so. Comic Con is, when I was doing it, it was a comic show. And then over the course of maybe two or three years, I watched it evolve into a air quotes comic show, which means I started running into more people who were there for signatures from people from who had been on Star Trek. Or mm -hmm. people who were there specifically for the cosplay convention. Or people who were there for other reasons that had nothing to do with comics. And this is not me saying those people are bad. What I, This is me saying I cannot sell comics to people who are not here for comics. Not with the kind of volume that justifies me being there. And I remember when I was in the hotel room with Randy and Danielle. And we were just having this discussion and we all three were having like the identical experience. So I knew this wasn't like just me. And we just made sort of a generalized business decision. We're like, yeah, this is the last one we're doing. And we all put out tweets. They're like, hey, everyone, this is the last year we're going to be in Phoenix kind of for the foreseeable future. If there's any books you want from us, come get them tomorrow because we won't be back. And there's a lot of, oh, why? And we had to explain on Twitter. It's like, this next year, it's obvious we need to make year. money is why uh, yeah. this is not a comic show. This is very quickly not becoming a not comic show. And there were a few, not many to people's credit. There were a few people. It's like, can't you just come for the fun of it? It's like, no, bitch, this is my job. No, <laughs> this is my job. Yeah, yeah I would. Oh, <laughs> I'll make the noises. It's just one of those things where it's like, no, I, I don't do cons for fun. Like there are cons I do that are fun, but I don't do cons. This isn't recreation for me. This is work. That's like your boss. Well, maybe you have a terrible boss. I don't know, but most bosses wouldn't go. Oh, can't you just come in for the fun of it? Like no, <laughs> no. I, I would to love think. to attend conventions as a just an attendee. I actually, I've, I've never done it. I've never done it. I've mentioned this before on Twitter, but there is one convention I, I strongly consider attending every year. I probably put it off for 2024, but maybe 2025, uh, the licensing show in Vegas. Licensing Expo, I think. I will take me with you! <laughs> I want to see Vegas. that shit back to the licensing show. Yeah, it That feels, sounds fucking stupid. I want to go. It feels very Angoulême in that... The show is very much for business meetings, you know, business, business, business. Numbers. Yeah, but it sounds like a, like a clown show. I have to it, see it. Oh, the videos online make it clear it's super duper weird. Yes, that, that I want to go for the clown the show. Uh, and vibes. I don't know what would come of it, but quite frankly, I don't know what would. I didn't know what would come of Angoulême either, and I ended up meeting a bunch of really cool people, and I ended like, up. Isn't it just worth it enough to like go and just see some weird shit and be like, yeah. wow, look at this dumb shit. But at the same time, the if I, go, I, I am going to justify it by doing business stuff. Oh, of and course. I'm going to, you know, take meetings with various property holders, I guess. And you can write all that it. shit off. And right, exactly. And oh, the liquid off. latex is pulling my hairs off. Ah! No! Amanda, please keep the stream PG-13 at most. I'll fight you if you make that <laughs> joke again. <It's... laughs> it doesn't get funnier every time you do it. Yes, it does. But I was thinking that, you know, uh, Spike, it's meetings. called a three B and you've used up your three. Um, a what? It's, 
it's a no, three beat. It's a writing thing. Oh, beat. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, technically, well, technically that read. was two. I can't read, so. But she's anyway, got. Oh, she gets another one. <laughs> I have been thinking, like, every once in a while, I'll go and look at the Licensing Expo, like, guest list. And the whole point is, you go there, you arrange meetings with people, and you kind of give them your pitch. And maybe something comes of it, and maybe something doesn't. So it's very Angoulême in that sense. And I was like, hmm. Now, it, would I approach any of these people going, let's make a comic together? And, like, there are people where it's like, oh, fucking, of course not. Where it's like, I'm not going to make a The Property Brothers comic, you know? But there are other people there, interesting things that, you know, uh, I'm always down for trying new things. I'm you, always down you, for doing I mentioned it before, but like, you know, what's like a really like kind of fun to just casually go and ogle and is usually local. What? Bridal conventions. Oh, yeah. Those. those are fun to just go and look like and just browse because like it's all it's it's all the serve. It's not just all the services people want to offer people planning weddings. It's also the new technologies people want to offer people planning weddings. So, like, it gets weird. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Like, I think the last time I went to one, it was just, like, drones were becoming a thing. And you had all these people, oh, like, I'll bet. I will oh take God. drone footage of your wedding. And it, they had these all these booths set up and they were flying their shitty little drones. And these were bad drones. These were I can absolutely believe this. Yeah, these were before, like, drone. You could, like, just buy a mass produced drone that didn't immediately explode when, like, a butterfly passed it. Um, so yeah. it was pretty fun to be like, look, we can strap cameras to our drones and get beautiful shots of your wedding. Oh, don't mind the fact that my camera's really heavy and we can't get this thing five inches off the ground when we film your wedding. It'll be great. Yeah, and Matt and I watch a lot of YouTube, and one of the comments that we constantly have is wow everyone's got a drone now so i can absolutely picture people who want to have their magical perfect beach wedding the photographer going okay cool now walk along the beach in a leisurely at a leisurely pace holding each other's hands and gazing into one another's eyes and i'll get a sweeping drone shot and you can put it in your reel it's yeah like, all right i mean yeah <laughs> i actually did watch a a video of this guy who's like Here's how you would get started filming weddings. It was actually kind of interesting how it's like, yeah, I have all these cameras. We have two different camera guys. Uh, we like will ask like the P whoever they hired to like uh, do the the D DJ. It will ask, can we tap into your PA system to borrow your audio when everyone does their toast, please? Like they have to ask because they are not affiliated. So it's like they just have to hope the DJ is cool with it. So it was really interesting with them being like. Hey, can we plug our plugs into your plugs? Is that yeah. is that cool? By the way, I have fallen down a rabbit hole. Oh, a new one. I am I am currently on the Las Vegas Licensing Expo homepage, and I have clicked exhibitors. And I was my eye was immediately drawn to Second Coming Comics. Oh, uh, that comics can go one it. of two ways. Uh yeah yeah I I'm trying to figure out which one of those two ways it's going right now because I'm all like well if there is a comic group there you know maybe they know something I don't know so maybe this harebrained idea I've got isn't as fucking batshit as it might initially feel because there aren't a ton of there aren't a ton of comic people there Man. now I'm just thinking about wedding photography I'm thinking about the Las Vegas licensing expo. Like who I'm I'm trying to just sort of like, you know in like, my like, in my mind palace visualize like who would I you, approach? Do you know like the effort people have to do? Like people go to huge lengths to like recreate. Do you know what golden hour is? No, but it's like when it's the sun's a it's filming at, term. It's no, it's when it's also photography. It's when this it's when the sun is risen and also when it's setting when like the sun the sun is at a certain angle and everything is just lit really good and it makes skin tones look really nice. Um, yeah, okay. It's you only got a tiny window of opportunity for it. So like wedding photographers will go to like wild lengths to like recreate it at like noon like with like reflectors and all this crazy stuff. Movie makers too like there are so many shots that like are have that are filmed outside, so you think, well, this is all natural lighting, but behind the camera is a giant, like, nine by nine board that's white that's reflecting onto the actors. 
It's wild. It's fun. Also, Dark Horse Comics has a booth at the Vegas licensing show, and they are Ooh, in the directory. I can't make Spike care about my interests. <laughs> right next to Sea Mother, Dog. why? I just want to impress you. <laughs> Stop it. I'm imagining you're just flipping through a magazine while I'm bringing you drawings. Like, Mother, Mother, look. <laughs> That's mother, nice, dear. As <laughs> I blow cigarette smoke on you. Go get me a screwdriver. Mother, please. BBC Studios. Oh, they've got a booth. Mother, I made a reflector out of garbage bags. Mother. <laughs> Candlewick Press. Oh, I've heard that. Uh, Amanda, mm -hmm. did you see um, Izzy's uh, newest thing about dolls? I, um, I haven't watched it yet because I'm kind of weary of it because some of the lost dolls in the pic... I, maybe it's clickbaity. But I was like, that's not I a lost doll. I know what you're talking about. I was for, for one of them, I was like, that's not a lost doll. You can still yeah, find those. Yeah, that's a drawing of a lost doll by an independent No, no, I'm talking about um, Pinky Cooper. No, 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 I'm talking about Pinky yeah. Cooper. Yeah, the dog one. Yeah. Yeah, that's not an official Pinky Cooper illustration. Oh, that that's one's not a... Yeah, that's yeah. a repaint. But Pinky Cooper is not a lost doll. Yeah, it's just unpopular. Pretty much. Oh. Uh, um, I, I found Pinky Coopers in, like, stores as of, like, what, a few years ago. Anyway, I'm just weird when it comes to dolls, so it's like, mm, don't know if Pinky well, she, Cooper counts. And also She goes over, uh, she starts the video talking about um, Trash and Alley, um, which were apparently these dolls that never got made, so, like, only the prototypes, like, oh, yeah. appeared on a doll thing. Um, and they're like rats that made outfits out of garbage, uh, is their whole theme. Uh, and I'll probably she talks give it a about watch. Her, it just... The investigative uh, digging into these weird rat dolls. Um, but yeah. Yeah. It, oh, this was, well, it was this also, was... well, it had two things. One was a concept art for a cartoon pitch, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it was actually, they were made into like little plushes. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, that's, that's I need to get over. Were, I need to get over yeah. my uh my knee jerk reactions to thumbnails sometimes because I was like, "That's a Pinky Cooper repaint. That's not a Pinky Cooper. You can't fool me." For everyone wondering, by the way, Pinky Coopers are fashion dolls with little cocker were, spaniel faces. Yeah, they have cocker spaniel. Like you know how in Lady in the Tramp, uh, you know, Lady looks like that. Pinky Coopers kind of look like that, except they're furries. They have human they're bodies. Not... They, they do. don't, they they don't look like Lady. <laughs> no, they don't look like Lady, but they have that sort of, you know, sometimes you see people who draw those dogs and they use those ears like hair. Yes, yes. That's what hair. Pinky Cooper does. Yeah. Yeah. I do so, that. And there are like commercials. I'm so sorry. I'm getting where... loud again. Stop it. There are commercials you can dig up where they're, I don't know, like movie stars or something. Like, I don't know the marketing, but it's... They're, uh, they're, they're fashion like, uh, Yeah, they're, there's like little webisodes that are basically to advertise the dolls. Um, also, to to just interrupt the flow of everything once again, <gasps> like Viz Why? and Scholastic and all these other people have fucking like booths at this licensing of show. So they do. I definitely am interested in going now. Like, I didn't, it's like I was sitting there going like, I don't know, is this kind of like weird? Is this a little too out, out there? Like, no, no, clearly these people all know something I don't. So this is something for 2024, maybe. Anyway, yeah, uh, I, I am not personally into dolls. I don't collect them and I don't like seek I them out. I would if I had room and money. But I am interested in people who are interested in dolls. So I, <laughs> I watch a lot of doll Man, Patina is a very different doll than Pinky Cooper. I'm sorry, someone said that um, Patina is a... I mean, uh, Pinky Cooper is an infringement on Patina, but Patina is like a very different doll. <laughs> yeah, Aren't they by the Bratz people? What? Uh, Pinky Cooper. A lot of things are by the Bratz people. That's what MGA or whatever... Yeah, something that's like that. a lot of things are by the Bratz people. It's a pretty broad. That's like, yeah. I just know that, like, one of the things that amuses me like, about isn't that of... candy by like Hershey? Like, yes. I don't know this shit. Don't act like I should know. I well, <laughs> I'm shaming you for your lack of doll knowledge right here, right yeah, now. One of, one of the things I actually really like about uh, doll tubers is 
they talk about the drama between Mattel and MGM. Hasbro. Hasbro. Like, all these companies. Because how they compete for licenses for really lucrative doll lines like Disney princess doll lines and how Barbie was copying Bratz, but originally Bratz was copying these things over here. And so there's just a lot of really cutthroat neck and neck competition to determine who has the most popular doll line and the distinction between play line dolls and, you know, just collectible dolls. You do have dolls. to take, I've watched some of those and you kind of do sometimes have to take what they say with grains of salt. Cause I've watched a few and been like, yeah, that is a misrepresentation of how that historically happened, but okay. They yeah. are, they are not free from the bias of their communities. <laughs> well, no one's fully free I'm just from saying, bias. I'm just yeah. saying, I wouldn't go repeating the things they say like, yeah, this is factually what happened between such and such. Oh, and I don't talk such. to anyone about this shit. I just, you're talking about it. it. You're talking about it to me right now. Yeah, but you know yeah. what I mean? I, I do not spread God, the gospel. I'm, God, I'm hyper sorry. I'm all excited because like I poured latex into my mold today and I'm all like, now I have to wait and I'm all peppy about it well i hope you pre-game sufficiently that was um. your third you don't get another <laughs> how about this? How about soak over. in it enjoy I, it I revel in it it's over i do what i want no i, I want. i'm making I an amazing well it's not amazing that's tooting my I own do. horn i'm making a puppet head with a latex face it's going to be cool you cannot sully it with your bad <laughs> Genuinely not good jokes. Humph. <laughs> the more you're upset, the more pleasure it gives me. Yeah, but I'm upset because you're not appreciating my artistry. Well, I do a comic no one reads, so Bullshit. welcome to the club. Bullshit. No, no I assure you no I don't insult your comic. I assure you no No, 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 no. These are not comparable things. You are belittling <laughs> me. <laughs> no, honestly, though, this sounds... People are going to like fucking roll, roll their eyes directly out of their fucking heads, but... It's actually kind of, it's really freeing to just be making some weird shit in the actually, corner. Let me go tweet a picture of it. It looks terrifying. It's very freeing to be making weird shit in the corner and not have to worry about it appealing to as many people as your personal morals will allow you to, <laughs> will allow you to market to. It's just, a, it's, it's just nice to make this unmarketable, weird, gross thing that's about my interests and my preoccupations, as opposed to going, fuck, but can I sell this? Would Bart Spike, Noble I love your this? step idiots. Yeah, but you also have weird tastes, so it's not like either of us are mainstream kind of people, you know? And I'm not saying know, that... Like, like, we both liked Mad Men, and that was very popular, Spike. That's, well... <laughs> The thing is, I'm not saying I don't like anything mainstream. I'm just saying that the things I create aren't particularly. Oh, shit. I don't have talcum powder. powder. You think I can use like finishing powder? And I'm saying this just in general, by the way, everyone. Like, if you like mainstream shit, I don't care. It's fine. There's nothing wrong about liking mainstream shit. It's literally designed for you to like. I gave it. you an opening, and you did. I'm bored. I'm <gasps> bored with you. I'm bored with you. <laughs> Spike is a monster. <laughs> <laughs> boring uh, <laughs> i have a person in my chat who says objection i have a partner who reads your comic and loves it oh 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 thank you that's so kind of it's gonna get real bad <laughs> yeah, i think people are looking forward to that though like i think yeah. it has i think this is the type of setup that's like okay you know where this <coughs> is going right like you know how this is gonna go right Okay. Uh, you, you, you two do absolutely do not count because I've definitely run shit by you, so you probably have a good idea of e. how bad this is going to get. But it, it's going to get so bad. It's like I've been trying to establish these past few pages. These people are really no, you know what? I can't say stupid. They're ignorant. They're Spikes really blurbos. Ridiculous. They're they're wildly ignorant. Oh, okay, they're good. Corn starch. Ridiculously ignorant. Actually, I should probably just look this up because it's like after you pull the latex out of the mold, you have to um powder it with talcum and stick to itself and you and, have to uh, rub it there and tell it it did a good job uh you know anyway. if i leave this this is this ends like i control all this this is kind of dependent on me being here uh, uh anyway uh in my discord um yeah. now that it is launched gross uh oh, i'm gonna start doing uh little movie nights um oh, that does sound fun, though. 
uh in october we're gonna watch werewolf movies on saturdays appropriate um i have made an announcement uh for a little schedule um and i'll see how it goes if it goes well i might do a werewolf movie every full moon um oh that'd be cute yeah that's on brand yeah uh, All right, I just at the same tweeted time, the pictures. I am of the opinion that Discord will probably be super cool and super fun until that. No, one we person... don't need to retread it. We already had our long talk about that our I... you and I having like. You yeah. just ban them, and that's it. Yeah, we'll see. That I'm it. allowed to ban someone from any re for <laughs> any reason. That's never it. That's <laughs> thank you, Amanda. I don't even want to fucking push it, but yeah, that's. I'm no, just. That's, it, never that's it. never just it. No. People, oh, people are fucking messes. Everyone's a fucking. Mess. I oh, I've been helping, messes. like I've been helping friends make a little dinosaur Discord server. I'm like helping them. I'm I'm, I'm their copywriter in the traditional sense. I'm writing their copy, and they're like much younger than me. And I'm help. I'm like, y you guys. Yeah. They're like they're trying to foolproof it against drama. I'm like, oh, honeys, no, there's no such thing. You can't. There's you just no have to roll with it, babies. It's I fine. used to have the opinion. I used to have the opinion that artist circles were more prone to drama than any other social group because art is directly tied <laughs> to. <laughs> no. I know, right? Wasn't this naive? Wasn't this it adorable? It was very. Yeah, where it's art is directly. You know, it's a thing you made, so it's it's tied to ego. Oh, my favorite and shit people... is hearing about like other communities and hobbies and what like their shit is. Yeah, and it's like that is why, in my opinion, at the time, and I was like, you know, twenty four, twenty five when I when I thought this. In my defense, that is why artist communities fucking imploded so often. Like every little IRC channel had maybe a two-year half-life at most before it just dissolved into a terrible mess it not but at the same time now i'm just like looking around it's like no that is that is absolutely not the case it's how humans behave it's, it's humans because you know we're hierarchical and we're we are slaves to ego in a lot of cases and we are covetous and we are sometimes maladjusted and those things interact in such a way where the best way i can compare it to and sorry this is fucked up but it's it's what immediately comes to mind people who are in toxic relationships if they come home from work and they were made to feel small at work or they fucked up in public at work or they were dressed down by their boss at work if they come home and they see i don't know like their partner has put their shoes in the mud room in their spot and they fucking explode because they are now in a safe place to fucking explode and it's just one of those deals where it's like it is not about the shoes it is not about the mud room it is not about your spot spot in the boot cubby this is something you have been saving up and you are now unleashing it on all of us and that has happened time and again and like every part of the reason i was so you know gun shy about the idea of an iron circus discord like no not on my fucking watch because way too often i have seen as years progress and that's why i say like the half-life is two years as years progress and more more track more space opens up between people because a lot of these discords start out with a lot of people kind of on equal footing like they're all students or they're all pros at a certain level or they all live in the same town or something like that and as space grows resentments build and eventually something happens that is not about the thing that happened it's something that was building up for two or three years and unlike conversations in person conversations online can get screenshotted and so mm -hmm. no matter what people's resentments and offenses and like you know remember what you said to so and so has a level of permanence that personal conversations do not have and so if you want to just go in and rip the scab off any old time, you can just go back and look. It's like, remember that time that they had that party and they invited everyone except me? It's like, holy fuck. Like that, like, so I, I'm on and the opinion. So, well, Spike, you are describing friend groups and peers. And, um, and as you said, everyone starts on the same footing. Yeah. Um, whereas I have been in several discords that are for people that back this person's Patreon. Uh-huh. 
Um, and only the one that has like over 500 members has had drama. Like yeah. the one, cause most of them, they're smaller, um, because they're Patreon backers, um, money is involved. Mm -hmm. Um, so it is there, there's a privilege, you are getting the privilege of being here rather than a free for all space. Um, also there is a focused topic for people to discuss rather than just, um, I'm going to start fights because, mm. uh, yeah, well, it's never just because it's, yeah, it's all- well, like to take out what's going wrong at work or whatever. Whereas like, um, for the most part, like the right now, like I gave you the example of the podcast group that I backed the Patreon of Chipperish, like right now their podcast is about the Netflix Sandman and it's just people like talking about that TV show and talking about the podcast that's talking about that TV show. And there's like, Mm. occasionally people go into the side chats to be like, I'm also watching this TV show. And I don't know anything about any of these other people's lives other than their opinions on Sandman and some Marvel superhero stuff. Um, And uh, so that's why I like, I think I can cultivate that type of space. Um, There is no place for them to vent things. There is no place for them to talk about politics. Um, There is, uh, it is just like, Here's where you talk about Kel shit. Here's where you talk about some other movies and shit. Um, this is not for you to dump what happened at work today, Land. Yeah, that levels like that definitely require a dedicated level of moderation too. Um, mm-hmm. And that's another big part. Like I don't fucking, I don't feel like it. I don't. Feel, <laughs> I have enough things uh, that are demanding my attention at any one time. I, I, yeah, I, uh, uh, I got. I got I got someone who's not me to be the mod, so oh, yeah. uh, but I am still allowed to ban anyone for any reason. Uh, Laura Vincente is saying I've been to a bunch of discords for comic creators, almost every single one had drama. I am so not surprised. That is the least surprising thing ever. And again, I bet I I can almost like fucking guess what happened. Like someone got like they they got their webtoon check and bought a used car, and suddenly three people hated them. Like I, I can fucking just predict it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that 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 that's the um general like vibe I'm going for, and also like I genuinely hope you're successful. I really do. Yeah. Um, because like the podcast Discord, I've been in that Discord for like five years now, mm-hmm. and. Yeah, the the people that um, were troublemakers just left. Yeah, and I that's significantly less about ego too. Just like, hey, everybody, we all really like this podcast. Let's talk about the latest episode. Is a very narrow sort of field of yeah. discussion, and it doesn't yeah. become about anybody else's worth over anybody else's or someone else's perceived slight. You know, it's just yeah. People- so, someone in my chat is saying make a drama channel but don't allow anyone to interact with it and just post a note that says meet me behind the wendy's at 3 a.m for your <laughs> own boxing gloves <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's just it's so fucking and like cartoonists in general are the fucking i don't it's like honest to god no one gives a fuck about cartoonists no one no one at all and, and if anyone gives a fuck about cartoon like even bill waterson you know what i mean like he could fucking walk down the center of the street in Times Square, no one would fucking know who he was, and no one would. Well, care. intentionally, he doesn't want anyone to ever look at him. But um, even if he wasn't intentional, Gary Larson, Stan- yeah, could fucking like people might recognize Stanley. Um, yeah, but th- he's not a fucking cartoonist. He's involved in comics, though. That does not count. <laughs> What I'm saying, I don't, how, how does it not count? Like, uh, I have a lot. I'm not gonna get into it, but I think he's involved in the process, fan. and I could, I would consider, like, he's a he comic. Is, he's a 
individual known in comics. He is involved in comics the same way my husband is involved in comics. That doesn't make him a cartoonist. So, so someone said, uh, Stanley walks down the street, everyone would freak out because he's dead. <laughs> That'd be actually, I'd like to see that. That'd be pretty amazing. Anyway, but yeah, it's like I, just, I know he didn't do as much as people think he did, but he does. I think he did more than is being 90 percent right of his notability is he was cameoed in movies that's not true he did sell himself and marvel as a whole yeah. fairly he well sold himself in marvel he, as a whole but the reason people know who he is is that he is in billion dollar films no he not was he a, no he really was well. no i can attest to this as someone who doesn't even watch those movies I remember before those movies were a big thing, people still were drawing like caricatures of the man in like newspapers. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But at the same time, none of this makes him a cartoonist. I am talking about cartoonists. He was a salesperson and a marketer who, by the way, really loved stealing credit for creating characters. Okay, I still think he was inv involved in the process. I don't I'm not he saying he's not, inv he's not involved. I'm saying he's not a cartoonist. I'm talking about Bill Watterson and Gary Larson walking down the street. 99.9% .9 of people would have no fucking idea who they right, were. Right, that's fair, but I just don't understand why his le family's legitimacy, like, he, he, we were quoting him as an outlier. Outlier, yeah. He, he is an outlier, but again, I don't think he qualifies as an outlier for the point I am attempting to make right now, which is cartoons are incredibly low fucking stakes being a cartoonist is lower stakes than being a fucking novelist it's lower stakes than pretty much every Again, other i don't feel like that contradicts anything i was saying but okay yeah let me just keep going here and despite the fact it's so low fucking stakes it's like it's honestly maybe that's why people tear each other's throats out so much <laughs> although definitely actors and com holy fuck comedians i Jesus mean Christ. again i don't agree with that either because have you seen what happens in the herpetology communities no but i was about to talk about the fucking comedians like and when i talk about comedians i don't mean like fucking drill on twitter i don't mean people who just make you laugh i'm talking about people who are capital c comedians in the capital c comedy capital w world who want to make it in comedy and these people would fucking claw each other to death like wild animals in a cage match. I am amazed by how like insanely aggressive and sort of touchy and prickly comedians, again, with a capital C can be. Because like I say, I, a lot of times when I'm working, I just let YouTube play. And for a while there, YouTube kind of dragged me into comedy tube and Oh, it's so fucked up over there. It's it's like you think, oh, comedy tube. Okay, here's the time for funnies. Like, no, it's like 90% so-and-so is lying about their age and also stole all their wife's material. And then they crashed another comedian's show and they got in a fist fight. And now they're pretending they have a show at, you know, the Laugh Factory, but they don't. And here's the receipts. It's like, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I, honest, I will still say exotic pets will always best that yeah because it's, it is never just a matter of like ego it is also a matter of moral high ground oh yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. and that yeah. really fucks people up when it's just like well i've decided this person doesn't raise animals the way they're supposed to they yeah. are practically child abusers now um we are going <laughs> to call uh yeah. we are going to call the wildlife uh what's it called Rainforest. we're gonna call uh, yeah PCA? animal no, I was thinking about national, like, there's there's the wildlife, like, when people have a domesticated fox and, like, they oh. try to, like, report it like it's not a domesticated, like, there's lots, like, oh Animal my God. control? No, not animal control. It's, like, wildlife. Uh, are you something. are you also currently thinking of, uh, of Vader? I'm thinking of multiple instances. This is not yeah. a, that was not a unique uh, yeah. occurrence. Yeah, but that, that was just the most documented. Yeah. That and, was, no. that always makes me think, it's just, like it's like the perfect example of like online activism like for folks who aren't aware back when tumblr was like a really popular uh format when a lot a lot of people were on tumblr and maybe it hadn't as a community as a website had time to put on the brakes a little bit and reflect there was a poster who had a pet black fox and that's why it was called vader it was all black and it had its little collar and everything. And 
there were some people who I'm not sure if anyone ever found out who decided this person should not own a fox because a fox is a wild animal. So it shouldn't be in your house, sleeping in your bed, using a litter box and chasing toys while wearing a collar. That's cruel. And they couldn't obviously go to someone's house and wrench the fox out of their arms and throw it over the fence into the woods. They couldn't do that. That's a crime. But what they could do was call animal control and lie to animal control and tell animal control, so-and-so has a fox and it bit me. And that is what someone did. And we know that's what someone did because the owner of Vader posted- Also, didn't someone, didn't they brag about it? I don't know who, if if they, whoever did it actually came forward. I never heard a name. Oh, no. I remember it being like anonymous bragging. Oh, okay. But basically they, animal control came to the house and said, we had a report that this fox bit someone. And Vader's owner was like, what the fuck? Like this fox doesn't leave my house. How would that happen? But supposedly animal control came into the house anyway and was all like we have to take the fox for rabies testing because it's a fox and it bit someone and the laws in this state basically say that's what we got to do and so again this is all from vader's owner they began functionally chasing the fox around the house while the owner's like you're scaring it you're scaring it you're scaring it and when they finally grabbed it it turned around and bit one of the animal control people because it was scared and the animal control people then took it in and the owner spent two or three days calling animal control, trying to explain to them the the fox has had its shots and he has the paperwork and all this other stuff. And animal control eventually got back to him three days later. It's like, okay, yeah, we, we appreciate that. You showed us all this paperwork that the fox has had his shots and whatever. But um, during the fox's intake, it bit somebody. And so we have decided that this is an aggressive animal and we euthanized it. Would you like its collar? And that is how that went down. And it's just sort of one of those things that's like, that is such an extremely online fucking thing to do. And an again, that happens thing. a lot with Yeah, like, I'm not saying it doesn't. Uh, that was just the, probably the most... But that's why I'm saying, like, yeah. that community... Like, not that community. There's mold. That's the other thing is, like, it's never one community. It is multiple separate yeah. and intersecting little pockets of exotic pet ownership you that yeah. will have their individual drama and sometimes they will collide like you yeah. will have one group of like chinchilla owners that have their own set of drama and like this is how you're supposed to do them we this this we've all agreed on this and then you have a completely different group of chinchilla owners that's like well we've all agreed on this and then one day they meet yeah yeah and all and shit breaks through loose yeah and there was a joke i think it was ryan north who said something on, like this on twitter once that i've always thought was like the perfect description of pet communities and pet tube which is how to tell if animal abuse is occurring number one is there an animal in the picture yes then it is abused yeah <laughs> So it's like, you can fucking look at pictures of anything. You can look at a picture of someone and their dog like, why do you own a husky in Arizona? That's the beauty. Why, why, yeah. why do you own a parrot? That's the beauty. It can, be, why, why? it can be easy to think like, oh, well, comic community must be the most emotional and drama filled. Yeah. But it's like, eh, not really. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, Abby, The most like, drama I've said, experienced has been very interpersonal and it would have happened probably if we were all yeah it's about personalities or if we were yeah. making comics it's about personalities more than scenes definitely and abby lurky just said it's basically swatting what happened to vader yeah pretty much i mean and it was one of those things where it wasn't even done with the best of intentions it was not done from a place of honesty it was done from a place of self-righteousness it's very PETA in that these animals are better off dead than in lo loving homes it's extremely fucked up uh, well, I also think it's um it's um what contributes it to the intensity is like um the level of perceived stakes like yeah. being like being jealous of a comic artist like God I wish that was me the stakes aren't very high no it's no. really hard to Comics convince yourself so even as jealous as you can get it's extremely hard to convince yourself that like this person succeeding is somehow hurting you know what I mean even yeah. the most bitter butt butthead like. Mm -hmm deep down knows the stakes are low. But with something yeah. like exotic pets, the perceived, not the real stakes, but the perceived stakes are extremely high because it's like, this is about animal welfare and ethic. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. this yeah. is about the quality of life of a creature. So, like, people can get 
wild. Yeah, I'm not gonna get super into it, and I'm not gonna name names. Uh, I named Vader's names because you know Vader the Fox is pretty easy to search up. And Respect on the... his name. Yeah, but uh, there were a couple of pet tube things I was super aware of maybe six months ago, where one of them was apparently a mid-sized, middling, higher middling level pet tuber got caught in a forum that was like a fan forum for pet tubers talking shit about all the competitions and trying to rile people oh, up yeah. into <laughs> unsubscribing or accusing them of animal abuse and it was just so fucking mean girls it was just oh, that, so fucking that happens a lot in community that was a big thing and then there was also another pet tuber who i watched for a while because they had a big collection that was interesting oh i know who you're talking and about <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, everyone's going to know who I'm fucking talking about in a minute. Anybody who's even tangentially just on the periphery of Pet Tube is going to know who I'm fucking talking about in a minute. But uh, they had a big collection that was really interesting. And, and they had charisma, so I watched them. And then they started dating a rock star and got hooked on heroin. <laughs> and it just, it just went downhill real fast. And it, it, it's just, it was one of those things where you didn't see it coming you know what i mean yeah. it just came, it came out of nowhere they didn't seem like that would ever be an issue for them they would talk sometimes about how they had like an anxiety issue and a chronic health issue that stopped them from going to school like so they didn't have a high school experience and that's why they started collecting animals uh, just to have something to do in the house and you're like oh that's nice good for you and then they go offline for like six months, except for posing on their boyfriend's Instagram. And you read the comments and all the comments are like, are you okay? We're afraid for you. What's happening? You haven't <laughs> respond. What's going on? And you're just like, Jesus, I'm, I'm actually watching someone's life fall the fuck apart. Wow. Yeah, it is funny. It always, it's always funny when like youtube recommends a video and it's it's not a video you watch it like that was interesting and you look at their community tab and they're in the middle of something and you're like what the fuck okay i'm leaving never mind bye oh, yeah. there have oh, been yeah. a few times like like uh there's a little while when um uh whenever like uh oh what is it uh hell of a boss would do an update i would watch some of the youtubers doing like um episode synopsis and reviews and critiques because i always think it's interesting to see like okay how are they going to critique this is it's interesting right and a few times i was like oh you like this let's recommend another i'm like yeah i'll click it i'm working and then it was like the then you scroll down and like you catch a comment that's like that's not what you said last week blah blah and everyone's like dogpiling the creator i'm like oh yeah. something is happening here <laughs> but i'm leaving <laughs> goodbye i yeah yeah Good, it's, it's, i can't goodbye yeah there was um for reasons that should be obvious to anyone who's been oh watching and what youtube been started doing. doing that thing where it, like recommend it'll if you watch like a youtuber it'll sh even if you don't subscribe to them it'll share their community posts with you and that's been weird like i watched yeah. one owl house related video by some person like a year ago it still recommends me their community posts and again <laughs> It's like, hi, sorry about the drama from the last thing. I didn't mean to say the horrible thing I said. I'm like, why am I getting this? Who are you? Yeah, there was there is so much fucking nonsense in animation tube. It is like, okay, I have been having this experience, and maybe folks watching watching can also relate to this. I've, I've never been having experienced this experience anything where. <laughs> Amanda is a newborn fawn shaking, still covered in amniotic fluid. No experiences ever. Mother. <laughs> and there was this whole thing where it's like expose on this pervert animation superstar. And I'm like, what? And it's about this person. Like, I have never ever heard of them in my fucking life, but they have like a hundred thousand Twitter followers and like a million subscribers on YouTube. And I watch a lot of animation YouTube, so it's always like a little. Weird oh, I think like, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, and it's just like it's like the one always... who did the video about shitting. Well, that's one of them. I'm talking about the one specifically who I can't even say the one specifically because this is like multiple ones who were like actively predating on like their really young fan base by like 14 yeah. 15 and they had like this private porn twitter where they would draw the porn yeah. of their fans who were like under age uh, let's, let's keep it a little 
know. And it was it was just one of those things where it's like, wow, the internet is really big. I'm not getting flagged for just talking about shit. <laughs> yeah, the internet is really big. I just and this is. A I mean, thing. that's what also makes it cool. Like, on, yeah. there's that stuff, but there's also there are people like leading extremely like successful content creator careers in some yeah. niche community you've never heard of, and you only found out because like you did a misclick, and it's like uh, this yeah. has been going on this entire time, and I yeah. okay then enjoy your yeah. little empire. Bye. Exactly, it's kind of wild, and there's so much that. You just stumble across it, and you can just, you can spend a week just totally immersed in a completely new culture that you had no idea about. And that's I mean, actually... I spent like a whole month watching Pokemon Nuzlocke. Um, yeah. yeah. I lately I've been really into the uh, the Lost Media stuff, so I've been watching a lot of Lost Media stuff, and that's been really interesting. So there's an active hunt on right now for lost episodes of Doctor Who. That's like a really big thing. Uh, lost Doramon, like whoever finds the lost first season of the first animated series of Doramon is going to be a god for a lot of people. I thought it was already destroyed. I, see, that's the thing. It's like people don't know. what ah. is If it hasn't been destroyed, it's probably, and see, this is a term I, I know now. It's probably succumbed to vinegar syndrome. Which is a thing oh, yep, that I happened. learned about that from. Is that <laughs> was that Mercury? What's it, person or Kenny Lauderdale? Yeah. I personally learned about it from Kenny Lauderdale. Okay, uh, for folks I, there's another um, YouTuber who covers similar subjects. Yeah, for folks who don't know, vinegar syndrome is named for the smell that old film stock takes on when it's starting. Is it specifically to break celluloid. Down. I think it might be celluloid. It's old film stock when it starts to break down and that's when you know the t the clock is ticking like it's going to be lost forever very soon because it, it is now starting to functionally decompose and when it does that it gives off a smell like strong vinegar to the point where like it's unbearable if there's a, several reels of this in one room and a lot of folks who seek out lost media they'll talk about how they'll find these film canisters that just have a label on like do not open because of the smell and that's vinegar syndrome when film just starts degrading and breaking down. And there are people who have dedicated pretty much all their free time and they have Patreons going and everything. That's all. Send me your old footage so I can digitize it. So obscure old anime or weird old commercials or strange old films aren't simply just lost to the march of time forever. And this is like this, this very obscure kind of thankless work. And I see it people doing it for old black and white cartoons i see people doing it for old anime i see people doing it for you know dawn of hollywood films and it's it's fascinating because they have these youtube channels and, the, and you know who who are the most powerful of all of them the people <laughs> who? who do it for commercials yeah yeah it's like oh my god you have the hardest god speed you brave soul yeah and, the most and ephemeral you... of media yeah and these people are very quiet about it and they're just they make me think yes, of Yes, Mercury a, Falcon. That's what I was trying to think of. Oh, I'm not familiar with Mercury Falcon. They I'll do similar and, vids. I'll have to go and look them up. Because I, I, I'm i loving this lost media shit lately. It's not all lost media. It's mo it's kind of more... They do more old media than lost media. But, I can, but I it's also still like interesting. Old. I also like old. So old is good too. But yeah. And I, you know, we thought we were out. Oh, we're in the digital age. Lost media doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> People know better than that. It can happen if things get caught up in legal shit. Oh yeah, that's that's incredibly common. That's a thing I I haven't like I hadn't rather considered. Like, there's lost media simply because it's on celluloid stock or it got burned in a giant vault fire. There was like an enormous vault fire at a big Hollywood studio. Oh. Uh, in the late 20s and a lot of yeah. literally the first films ever just went up in smoke and there's nothing anyone can do about it but uh yeah the first werewolf movie is uh in that uh group um so people only like vaguely know what the plot is of the first werewolf movie yeah and there are also movies that are like you know the first a lot of the first animated films are just gone because they were on celluloid stock or People just thought of it as sort of, they didn't think of it as film with like a capital well, F. Well, also if I remember right, um, specifically from Kenny Lauderdale's video, was Japan has a unique problem because of humidity. Yeah. It's yeah. a contributing factor that maybe other places don't have to deal with. Yeah, exactly. But it's 
it's an interesting world to sort of peek in on people who are just doing their best to to preserve media and there's going to be media that you don't really have to worry about you know but there's always going to be media that kind of slips through the cracks and there are people who do this for video games too which is kind of how i found this stuff uh there are people who kind of want to rescue code like there's a term in case you know you're brand new there's a term called abandonware which is just software that no one has thought to preserve no one is updating no one is taking care of no one is ensuring access to and there are people who it is their it is their life's goal they've decided to preserve abandonware and if they can go and interview the people who made it and talk to them about it and it's just this really interesting sort of modern archiving that you f- you don't really consider it's like oh wait this is important to happen because think of all the media that we've lost from back in the day there are books by roman emperors that we'll never read oh i don't care about that i care more about anime you know anime is also good but <laughs> also like there are significant chunks of human history missing because of how media used to be produced and Back in the day of, let's say, you know, the Roman Empire and even before that and also immediately after that, all the way up to what we would consider sort of like the Middle Ages before, you know, China and the Gutenberg Press got really going. The only way to get a book was to have someone copy that book for you. So automatically, a lot of people are priced out of ever owning books because you can't get one unless you can pay a copyist to make it for you. And as a result of this, unpopular books, there were very few copies. And really popular books, there are lots of copies. So when something like the sack of Baghdad happens, when the Mongols just utterly fucking destroyed Baghdad, or the Library of Alexandria... Or when MasterCard changes its rules and like you <laughs> lose an entire ongoing yeah. erotica series. Blech. There are entire books, volumes, series that are just now gone forever because there weren't enough copies of them in the world. And this isn't even like sort of touching on the fact that for a long time, parchment was the main medium for writing in sort of the Mediterranean world and also the UK and Ireland. And parchment was expensive. It is not paper. It is animal skins that have been laboriously treated to become what they are. And there was a move that monks would just do where they would just scrape all the writing off of old parchment and copy a bible over it and so there are people who go out and they get find the oldest bibles they can on parchment and they use special photography to try and read what was scraped off because you know it kind of leaves a shadow so you know these books are destroyed as well as being burned and being thrown in a river and just that shit's gone for like the thing that gets me is people talk about sort of like roman myths and uh, Norse myths and all these other sort of tales that define these cultures and there are massive holes in our knowledge of even like basic shit because there are just entire chunks of the North my- Norse mythos missing. There are entire chunks of the Roman mythos missing because whatever books they were in burned and we just don't know and so well, it's also a lot of those would have been passed down orally too so um yeah. By the time they were getting written down to begin with, like the people that would be telling them were all dead. Yeah, there's a, ever- a lot of there's a thing like where you're like you just of course we can keep passing it down. We'll always yeah. be here, duh. Yeah, yeah, and you know when you read Norse myth, this is something that really jumps out at you. Like they'll be they'll yes, say, I, as, as I often do. Yes, yes. <laughs> as we all know, so and so had sworn an oath to so and so, and you're like, wait, what? Why? No, I already read the Bible. Don't make me do this. Yeah, we don't know. I we already, don't know I already had to suffer from the so and so begat so and so nonsense. Please spare me. But it's pretty cool. There's good stuff in there about magical poetry beer. <laughs> um, oh man! Well, God, I, I always this comes up all the time. Like, I fucking love that China's been like extremely precious about their like the the four great novels. Because mm-hmm. they're extremely old, but like, not only is that really cool that they're very old, but they also kind of prove that certain narrative conventions are like timeless. Yeah, like I've always said it. It's it's something that gets um, lost in translation and during adaptations of Journey to the West. Journey to the West is just Looney Tunes. Yeah, like Journey to the, Journey to the West. Like people will like remake it, make it real serious and action oriented, and 
you know, make everybody a hench. But, like, it's about, like, Bugs Bunny and Porky Pig and Elmer Fudd. It, that's, and that's just so funny. Mm-hmm. It's just so fucking funny. Like, there's a chat, like, people, like, I always, like, get annoyed when, like, people do adaptations. I'm like, no, you left out the part where Monkey gets <coughs> on his cloud and pees on Pigsy's head to make him think it's raining so he'll leave. <laughs> like, no, stop trying to make this lofty and, like, dramatic. The monkey pees on the pig for fun. There was also, I forget, perhaps someone who's more well-versed in Chinese history than me will remember this. There was also an emperor who commissioned basically the sum total of all human knowledge. Go. <laughs> and he, <laughs> He's he like, made, here's the yeah, plan. All right, have all fun. Countless scholars, right? Countless books about the sum total. Like, this is everything we know. Everything. And... It took years, obviously, and hundreds of people, and it eventually got, you know, air quotes, finished. But China has been through it. (laughs) (laughs) There's a lot of shit that goes down in China. And so there have been entire volumes that have just been lost forever. And every once in a while, there's just like so many volumes of this stuff there. Every once in a while, they'll find one. And it's a big to do when they find one. And, the, you know, they they put it on a table covered with a red silk tablecloth and prop it up. And all the journalists come to photograph it while a security person stands like three inches from it scowling. Like, you know, it's a big deal when they find one. And that's that's super fascinating to me. And I, 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 I applaud and salute people who dedicate their time to preventing media from being lost forever because we are living in a ever more homogenized media environment. So variety is more important than it's ever been. MasterCard's trying to fuck me up. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry Spike. about that, Amanda. Spike, have you uh, heard the scapegoat worth- theory <laughs> about Loki? The what theory? The scapegoat theory about Loki. No, I don't think so. So it was basically there's a theory about like while studying Norse myth, like so you have Loki and Loki's children are prophesized to destroy the other Norse gods. Uh-huh. Um so uh Loki's kids are all locked up in some manner or another and right, obviously right. Ragnarok is when they all get out and fuck everyone up. Yeah. Um so but if you think about and so there are people that are like okay but in almost every other mythology the person who is prophesized to overthrow the ruling group um and then is tortured and abused or whatever they're the hero um and so it is basically there's a theory that like loki is not as villainous as um like modern understanding of norse myth would have you believe because all of that was written down by christian monks like 600 years later Mm -hmm. and they were trying to find a devil analog um in uh norse myth and so the idea is that maybe Loki was supposed to be like Ragnarok is less the end of the world and more the start of renewal, much like Zeus overthrowing the Titans and whatnot. Um, hmm. uh, so that was like an interesting, like scholarly theory that I was hearing about um, from a couple of mythology YouTubes. That's interesting. Hadn't heard that one, but I do know about the, um, the whole sort of <laughs> having all the children and that that the bit about the shape shifting and how somebody yeah. showed up and yeah <laughs> Loki Loki was a female horse to to draw someone else's horse away and then he disappeared <laughs> for a year and came back yeah like, this is my child <laughs> there was like okay. right and also, also Loki it. yeah uh mm-hmm. also um Fenrir is Loki's kid. Uh, yeah. And so, and so the scapegoat angle is that um, there is a story about where Loki gets like punished for some crime. Um, and it's always like, oh, Loki's the worst one. Um, but he doesn't actually do anything worse than the other Norse gods. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so the theory is, is that he might have been like a sin eater scapegoat person for the other gods um, is like another part of this theory. So it's people trying to like piece together um, the little bits that we have. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of piecing stuff together. Yeah. And again, one of the things, I think I've talked about this on Twitter in the past. One of the things that's worth remembering is this expectation of impartiality when you are recording history or Mm -hmm. culture or things like that. That's extremely modern. That's like in the last 50 years modern. And there was no expectation of impartiality when people were recording ancient histories. And so it wouldn't occur to them to not gas up their own culture and talk shit about everybody else. It wouldn't occur to them to not do that. And it mm-hmm. wouldn't occur to them to say, to think to themselves, I don't like this person. So I'm just going to fucking lie. I'm just going to lie and lie and lie and make sure everyone thinks they're scum from now on. Like that yeah. was what historians did. And they did it because of course they had agendas. It's just that they didn't, they weren't expected to even be subtle about it. They yeah. just, if there was an emperor that they didn't like, they talked shit. If there was a region they didn't like, they talked shit. If they went on a big adventure, you know, and sailed their ship around the coast of Africa or up all the way to Scandinavia or to Ireland, and they wanted people to read it, they'll just include entire chapters. I met a bunch of people with dog heads. You know, I met a bunch of people who had faces on their stomachs and they wore hats made of gold and their feet were the size of rowboats. And when it became too hot, they'd lie on their back and put their feet up like a sunshade. I saw it like that was just a thing that was fucking done. And it's the fact that people expect you to not lie in a history book now is really new. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, I just thought like that theory was really interesting. Um, uh, since you know it goes against what we popular mm-hmm. pop culture teaches us about loki yeah yeah well the thing about mythos is like that is that yeah. they're they're flexible and they're gonna they're gonna change over time and if marvel decides loki is one thing if disney decides loki is one thing in a hundred years that is what loki will be mm-hmm. such is life yep it happens it happens uh the, another part of their like fun theory like is uh they talk about um actually the earliest uh record of the Norse gods that we have are Romans interacting with Vikings hmm. or proto Vikings um because it's like there's a Roman general like writing notes and he's like yes and these people they worship Hercules and it's very clearly yeah. he's Ha- he's just naming like um their roman equivalent of like their yeah. gods or whatever um and uh loki ain't in there because the romans don't have a loki um or they don't care enough about a loki yeah. um, um herodotus went to egypt and he saw osiris yeah. worship and when he came home he's just like yeah they all worship dionysus and it's like bitch that is not dionysus but that's what yeah. he told people. Because that was the closest thing. You know, it's it, it's a thing. <laughs> yeah. It, it's common. And it, it caused and also I think it's worth remembering for a lot of folks, uh like like sort of the favoritism of various cults, like cults of belief, I mean, in that sense. Not cults as in, you know, crazy mm-hmm. end of the worlders with a bunch of rifles. Uh cults of belief waxed and waned in popularity. And so the history of Egypt is thousands of years long. So you're going to find a lot of legends that literally conflict with one another. And you're going to find things that are attributed to Thoth that, you know, another book will say, oh, no, actually, you know, Set did it. No, actually, Osiris did it. No, actually, Hathor did it. And it's like, yeah, of course, that's going to fucking happen. People can't keep a story straight for five minutes. Of course, they're not going to keep it straight for 5,000 years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, people especially who really- when they're not writing it down. Yeah, people who are real pedants about that kind of thing kind of need a reality check. Like, actually, it's all true. It's all true. <laughs> because mm-hmm. it was true for those people at that point in time. How uh, you doing, this Amanda? Seems- it's fun to talk about 
the 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 different the different belief systems and legends you of people. You can say that, but I don't have. <laughs> That's fun. I was on the floor again. I'm back. Yeah, syncretism. Exactly, Sacco books. Exactly. Just sort of the melding of beliefs, the sort of mix and matching of beliefs, which is why you have all these people calling Donald Trump Jesus Christ. Ugh. <laughs> oh, it's so fucking insane. It's so fucking insane. Anyone who follows me on Twitter knows that I, I occasionally just sort of bottleneck. Occasionally. Yeah, Q believers. And I believe are... uh, rubberneck, not bottleneck. Yeah, bottleneck oh, thank you. Something. Thank you. That is that is the correct term. Uh, I rubberneck Q believers. And one of the more fascinating elements of that, by the way, is the real like super lunatic Bible thumpy churches are losing believers to Q. So these people who have been primed their whole lives to believe total horse shit <laughs> are very vulnerable to Q shit. And they abandon well, church to be fair to online. Well, to be hours fair, the evangelical, their beliefs kind of prep them for these new oh, things yeah. too. Oh, That's, it's a little, it's a little much more of an easy pipeline because like, oh, this is everything you prepped us for and told us to look forward to. We're just, oh, you know, going in a logical direction. Yeah. A hundred percent, a hundred percent agree with that. The, they're, like this is kind of one of the things I used to say. I am I am not having children. That much is obvious at this point. But one of the things I used to say that people would be very like weirded out by and shocked by is like if I ever have kids, we are not doing the Santa Claus thing. And people will be like, oh, but that's that's cool and fun, and you know, not doing that sounds really fucking weird and joyless. Why would you not do the Santa Claus thing? And in a in a phrase, I think it opens a door. I think it preps you to believe in shit that is categorically untrue and you have like no justice control. and yeah. fairness okay. and i'm gonna say i i do plan to have kids and i am gonna avoid this santa thing but mm -hmm. i don't agree with you i understand that you you do not have to agree with me but i think when you raise a child with a certain amount of magical realism just as a part of everyday life it teaches a lesson that is incredibly difficult to unteach once they're 23. And other, I just, when I, you kind of like I, live in a I world I need to where see I, like a study on that because I just don't. Well, well, that's the thing. I have no studies yeah, on it. I, just, I don't see that being I just real. Think, I just think like when people, when you are ready to accept that here's a thing that I've decided is true because I've been told so often it's true that that means it must be true when that crack forms in the foundation that makes up your belief system a whole lot of shit floods in well so you see spike you say that but my response is maybe it teaches children because they do eventually figure out santa is not real that they need to use facts and critical thinking skills yeah, to, I, I remember uh, when I got the when I realized oh Santa's not real. I was like, I just remember staring at my parents like, "You jerks!" <laughs> I just re that was my reaction. I wasn't like yeah, upset. Yeah. So I was finding like, out Santa is not real means that you have now uh, realized you cannot take people's word on things, yeah. and you should look into stuff on your own. Um, yeah, if anything, to figure out the truth. If anything, later when they tell me stuff, I would quietly be like, "This is like the Santa thing, ain't it?" I can see that, but at the same but time, I also I think, think oh. in terms of like child psychology and how childs do, children will do that without you presenting them. Like they will already kind of believe some wild shit just because it got accidentally reinforced. At also, one point. I think there is such a thing as kid logic where yeah. kids. It's like they do not ask adults about things; they just sort of piece things together. In they're their like, head. it must be this. Okay. Like I've, I've met I some ever... kids who have. I've been like, you really think that? Okay. Yeah, there was a uh, thing on This American Life years ago, at least ten years ago, about kids. Is this logic. the one on Martin Luther King? No, this is okay. about this is about the white man. And okay, the, the thing is, there were these. This is someone who was recalling as a child uh, that they would hear their parents talk about things the white man has done that make the world oh, a no. bad place. Oh no, I can see where this is going. And as a child, they were not picturing 
a group of people they were picturing <laughs> one like one singular foot, yeah just one like <laughs> 12 foot tall you know colonel sanders from kfc looking motherfucker dressed in white from top to bottom with like snow white skin and snow white hair and snow white eyes and just just slowly and malevolently striding across the landscape just raining death and destruction wherever he went like that was the white man <laughs> who was doing terrible things to people and white man entire the countries like that was the uh, white man okay so spike i the reason why i asked is this the martin luther king thing because i listened to the same episode uh -huh. um but that is not the story that i always remember from it Mm -hmm. um the story that i remember from it is uh an unreligious parent um him and uh his he's he's hanging out with his child who um it basically asks him what's up with christmas mm -hmm. um and so he explains the santa claus thing but also because of the baby manger, like they were driving past the church and there's the uh, nativity scene. So mm -hmm. he says, uh, Christmas isn't just Santa Claus. It's also some people. And he explains Jesus um, as like, uh, he said that everyone should be nice to everyone else and treat everyone fairly. Um, and some people believe that he is the son of God because obviously he's not religious, but he doesn't want to like make his kid run around getting in fights with Christian kids. Right. Um, so he, that, that's his basic understanding. Um, and then later on, uh, like that the next couple months later, Easter rolls around and, um, little kid sees Jesus on the cross and he then has to explain, well, some people didn't like that Jesus told everyone. Oh, I see um, where this is going. Uh, you, you should treat everyone fairly no matter what. Um, and the kid goes, so, so they crucified him, uh, which is basically killing him by hanging him up on a cross. Um, and then fast forward to next February, and it's Martin Luther King Day, and they're getting breakfast at a restaurant. Um, and he explains to his child who Martin Luther King is. He is a man who wanted everyone to be treated fairly, regardless of the color of their skin. Um, and the kid goes, oh, like Jesus. And his dad goes, yeah. And then the kid goes, did they kill him too? Yep, they sure did. <laughs> and... Um, so that's the story that I always remember from that kid logic. That's episode. a good fucking story. Oh, yeah. I, dude, I used to be scared of like red high heels. Uh huh. Why is that? Because we had a landlady when I was real little, just young enough to start forming like lasting memories. Uh, and my mom and dad would get real panicky whenever she was gonna come over. I didn't know why, but they would get real panicky. And I didn't know what she did, but she, I'd never seen, like, high heels like that before. So I just, I, and that was kind of all I saw her for. I just remember her legs and her heels, and it was like, here comes the the, the, the villain. Here's the heels huh. and the legs. And so, like, that was like with Cruella all... Deville also has red high heels. That um, I was too young to have, for no. that have formed a memory for me. Again, this was a person I saw standing in our, like, entryway. And like I was, I my memory is I'm on the floor, belly on the carpet. I see her feet and her legs, and I'm like, "Oh no, Satan's here!" <laughs> and mm -hmm. like I would have nightmares about the red heels for a long time. Wow. Just because my parents would get anxious and panic, because like, oh no, they would like, oh god, she's coming over. We gotta clean up. Oh god, and I'm like, oh god, why are they? Red heels are here. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Thinking about the white man now arriving on your doorstep <laughs> with just red stilettos, <laughs> just like huge fuck me pumps and packed again, red. And like, like again, like I, I kind of, I'm not like I want to have kids, and if I ever get to have kids, I'm going to be like, 
oh yeah, some people like to pretend Santa gives presents. It's fun. Let's play along. It's it's like a game. I'm going to present mm-hmm. it like this is a game everyone likes to play. We pretend Santa's real. That's probably the healthiest way. It's cause, Why do we pretend Santa's real? Because it's fun. Where I grew up, I remember when it's like they were almost exploding to tell you. Uh, where I grew up, um, there were a lot of Jewish families. And when you, as a non-Jewish person, got to the age where you accepted Santa wasn't real, they were like, oh my fucking God, I finally get to talk to you about this. They were all like, yeah, it's like every fucking year, our parents would have to be all like, now this is a fun game the Christians play with their children. Do not ruin it for them. That would be mean. Do you well, want to be a like mean the person? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it was just, they're like, oh God, you have no fucking idea how much i wanted to say something but i couldn't because i knew my mom would be mad and i'd make you cry i still remember (laughs) when i realized santa wasn't real it was very anticlimactic yeah i basically walked in my mom wrapping my brother's presents and i guess she quietly went oh hey would you help me wrap these and i was like why what are what are these she's like and she was just like oh these are presents yeah right these are your brother's presents they're from us uh and I was like, oh, so you do the present. She goes, yeah, it, it's always been us. So like, oh. And I just remember my yeah. eyes narrowing, like, I see. And that was it. Yeah. I just, I you know, are like, a liar. Like, yeah. mm, I've been bamboozled. In Qu- my, uh, quiet acceptance. In, in my family, it's not like my, par- my parents didn't fucking like talk to me about anything. But the thing that made me figure it out is like, hmm, Santa and my mom have the exact same handwriting. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. uh, I, my parents never told me that Santa wasn't real, um, until it was, until I was much, much too old to believe in Santa, and they sort of double-checked that I didn't still believe in Santa. Um, You got that sorted out, right? Right? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it it was, it was, like, when I was 13, so, like, I was, like, obviously had figured it out years ago, but they still were, like, uh, and they're, like, well, we didn't want to tell you that he wasn't real because we told your older brother that he wasn't real and we think we did it when he was too young. So Aww. we didn't want to fuck up again. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I remember once when I was like 12 or something, my mom just started screaming about it's not real. It's not real. Santa's not real. But by then, you know, I'd already known. And it was clearly mm-hmm. she was like trying to do it to hurt our feelings. So it's like, okay, well, all right. That sounds I mean, like your mom. It sure does. I don't know. Have I ever told the story on here about the time I just thought we were now broke? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. All right. uh, folks who are curious about like the kind of environment I was raised in, when I say my parents didn't talk to me, this is what I mean. And Matt, my husband, is in the chat right now. And he's probably so sick of hearing this story. But I honestly didn't think to tell it to him until we were married maybe 10 years. Because it was just like one of those things. It's like, why would I bring it up? But when I told it to him, the look on his face was one of those things where it was like, oh, that I guess that's pretty weird, huh? Because <laughs> it never occurred to him that this was a thing that happened in the world. Um, there was a time when my mother and father had decided to build their own house. So they bought some land and hired an architect when they were building their house. And when the house got close to completion, obviously they decided to sell the old house and they cut a deal with the people who bought the old house. And that deal was okay. You can move in a few months earlier than when our new house is going to be finished. If you pay a little more and we will just move out early before our new house is finished. And we will just rent a little townhouse somewhere waiting for the new house to be finished. And that deal got cut, old house got sold, and we moved into a very small townhouse for a summer while waiting for the new house to finish construction. What I'm telling you now is something I figured out when I was in my 20s, because at the time, no one explained to me what was happening. So one day, we just packed all our shit, put most of it in storage, and moved into a little tiny townhouse that was like 50 miles from anything. And I just thought, oh, I guess we're poor now. And I held on to that belief for the entire time we were there because literally no one informed me what was going on. (laughs) 
And keep in mind, I was not like six. I was 11. Yeah. I mean, so that, that is pretty of, weird. I mean, yeah. the flip side is being told everything and being a paranoid little mess constantly. Mm, yeah, there is that. But that, when I tell people that story, they're like, I, no, that's I don't fucking your wild. Do not... said nothing to you. It's like I, my I don't instinct know what is to be you. a little weird contrarian, but no, genuinely, that is fucking weird. Yeah, that's that's the level of interaction I experienced with my parents growing up, where it's just they didn't tell me shit. And you know what? If you're raised in an environment where no one fucking tells you anything, you don't ask anything. Oh man, like the first time I like ate dinner at a friend's house, I was like sweating. Like, oh, this is Why? different. Oh, just because it wasn't... No one was screaming at each other. No, it wasn't tense. Mm. Dinner was probably the tensest time of the day. Okay, so what my what my parents did was... Okay, the kitchen... This is specifically my dad and my stepmom. May they rot. Um, <laughs> the, the kitchen... The dining area and the living room area weren't really separated. It was just the dining area had linoleum floor and the, ki- the, and the living room had carpet. So, um... You could see the living room TV from the table. They would intentionally turn the TV on to cartoons. Um, and if you turned your head to look at it, like if you were one of the kids who had your back to the TV and you turned your head to look at it, you would get yelled at for watching TV. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was really weird. And if they saw you look up from your food to watch the TV because you would have to peer around whoever's in front of you, you would get yelled at. This was dinner was also the time that whatever it was also kind of like a business meeting whatever needed to be discussed was going to be discussed that is when your grades were discussed that was where your behavior was discussed that post dinner is when punishment happened so that we would have a meeting about everything you did wrong your punishment would be discussed and uh, hashed out during dinner and um uh if there was and my parents were in like eight years of like custody battles and uh if my mom had sent my dad a letter that's when he would read it to us and say, well, here he would open it and say, all right, here's what your, how your bitch mother is trying to ruin my life. And he would read the letter out to us. These were meant to be confidential just to the parents. And he would basically say, um, if y'all didn't uh, tell her about everything we do, she wouldn't be sending these letters. So this is your fault. And that was dinner. Wow. And then I went to a friend's house. Pretty. I, I didn't start like hanging out at friend's house. It's still pretty late. And they were just eating and talking. And I'm just sitting here like, what the fuck is this? What is going mm-hmm. on? Uh, yeah. Matt says, I... the thing that blows my mind here isn't so much that they let you think we're now poor, but that they moved house and took yep. away your room and life without loads of pre-gaming. My parents didn't care, dude. Yeah. Like, to this uh. day, the thing about where I, all right, people who know me and see me and kind of, like, know the kind of person I am, they, they know I'm sort of goth. I'm not goth, but, like, I, I dress in literally one color. You're a poser. I'm a poser. I'm a goth poser. You're a straight edge punk. I'm a straight edge punk poser with a mohawk and like librarian glasses and I have a pierced face. And, you know, like that's that's who I am. The room I grew up in and I was not allowed to touch anything in this room was designed by my mother specifically. And it was powder pink with roses on the wallpaper and framed framed paintings of ballerinas because my opinion didn't fucking matter. Uh, like, sounds it just, like my bedroom. Yeah, it's just that's the that's the room my mother wanted for her daughter, and that is the room I lived in. And I had very little attachment to anything that was in that room because I didn't care about any of it. And there was no point in trying to get anything I cared about in that room because it wouldn't be allowed. Uh so um my mom cares a lot about appearances. Mm-hmm. Um and so, um, Amanda, um, while sometimes my, uh, dinners were tense, mostly cause we were getting yelled at, um, mm-hmm. I did figure out that my mom cared a lot about what other people think. So if I had done something wrong and was about to be in trouble, I would invite a friend over without telling her because she would not yell at me oh if a friend God. was over. I like would have, <laughs> I would have been murdered if I invited. So- I once oh. rode a bike to like hang out with a friend's house in a friend's house like a room without telling my parents first when I was like 14 and I was pu- I was grounded for it. Wow. Um I I did whereas, not bring uh, 
only one time did a quote unquote friend come. I remember. I will never forget this name. I remember his name. I like fuck uh, him. Amanda. I would get in trouble afterwards. It was oh, just no, a way to delay the being in trouble. No, you uh, just made me remember <laughs> the one time a quote unquote friend came over. I did not invite them. It was a friend who knew I was dating someone online, and suddenly he was in our dining room talking to my stepmom, and I'm like, oh my god. She's getting the information from the kid who lives down the street. She mm. has invited him into our dining room to get the dirt on me and my internet boyfriend. I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. I hate, th I remember that kid's name. I uh, Abby Lurkey, you are talking about how uh, your mom did not tell you about a jaw infection while you were in college. I think it's actually quite common for parents to not want to, you know, air quotes, worry their children. So they don't tell them about health stuff, especially if they personally perceive the health stuff as minor. Like, oh, I just got a little melanoma removed. It's no big deal. You know, they don't, they don't want to put the, you know, they think of it as protecting you, not telling you is protecting you. Whereas my parents weaponize their health in an attempt to guilt me into talking to them. Just a quick note. like <laughs> Oh, God, whole... that one's been coming. Sorry. <laughs> oh, bless you. Oh. Um, as a quick note. Everyone here, in case you didn't know, the numbers vary depending on who you ask. Between a third and a quarter of adults in America do not speak to their family. So if this is you, you're not that unusual. But anyway, um, yeah, my parents these days, they, they, I do not talk to them, period. Because like I have, I have nothing to fucking say to them. But every once in a while, they will attempt to reestablish contact and their only real method is i feel bad and i'm sick and i should note here this is not particularly effective on me man i'm just barren all tonight this is not particularly effective on me How because you? um spike you are not bare all <laughs> well, there's a lot you don't know i fucking assure you but there are two things that come up one is one time when i was a child I woke up in the middle of the night literally raving because I was delirious with a super high fever. And one of the things that's interesting about being delirious is you are like a passenger in your own body. Yeah. You're kind of like present, but you have no control over anything that's happening. So that is the state I was in. I was delirious in the middle of the night and my mother talked my father out of taking me to the hospital he asked me what my name was and i said butterfly mm. and he immediately started getting dressed because it was the middle of the night and obviously he was in his pajamas so he had to you know put clothes on to carry me down to the car and get me to the hospital because i was sweating and my eyes were rolling around and i had told the man my name was fucking butterfly and my mom came in and was basically like oh just stop don't bother with it it's it's fine she'll be fine well, I was literally delirious with fever in my bed. She talked my dad down from taking me to the hospital. So there's that. And the second time uh, I went ice skating, the first and last time I think I went ice skating, I fell and I got what I now recognize as a concussion. Uh, by concussion, I mean, mm, I, this threw explains and, a lot. I threw up and I went blind. Okay. Uh, so that's how hard I hit the back of my head when I slipped and and skated during ice skating but i didn't say anything because my mom saw i was not feeling well and she gave me a look that said if you make me tr make trouble for me i'm going to be super fucking pissed so i didn't go to the hospital and i didn't say anything to anyone i just spent the entire ice skating like group trip i was out there with like a bunch of other kids it's called jack and jill it's a it's a whole thing google mm -hmm. it and uh i just sat alone at a table half blind, swaying back and forth and violently nauseous because I had a concussion, but I didn't go to the hospital. So um, believe it or not, <laughs> these experiences make it really hard for me to fucking care. Yeah. When my oh man, I letters, send letters to my in-laws. This is the only way they try and communicate now, by the way. My in-laws are very sweet people. They're incredibly kind and good hearted. Ma Matt's mom, especially, is like, it's weird to call your mother-in-law adorable, but that is what she is. That's not She's weird. Adorable. 
she is an adorable woman who loves Matt desperately and loves her grandchildren desperately and loves her family desperately. And she's just fucking bomb. She's just really cute and wonderful. But um, she is also, I think there's a lot of history she is missing out on <laughs> because she is always very into reading these letters to me on the phone when she gets them, because she really thinks I should reconnect with people who were vastly disinterested in me as a child. And one of the, the letters always says something well you know i went in for a checkup and they say this and that and you know well this is happening now <laughs> and i listen because i'm polite i was not raised in a fucking barn but at the same time it's like you could never fathom how little i care <laughs> <laughs> i've definitely never... told y'all the, the stories about my dad and the my brother's headaches right yeah yeah uh, tell them again though because oh i bet God. there's much so my dad and stepmom were they were always like i think it, honestly i was gonna say they were medical deniers but they really weren't they were more power trippers because they would and i think it, maybe it was a sexism thing because they would take me to the doctor for stuff like i had like you know infections and injuries and they would take me to the doctor and they would take my shit seriously but they were shit like as crappy as they were to me they were just if you were a boy they were the worst they just you should just walk it off yeah, they were, they they were, you're, you should be playing football, you shouldn't be playing, you know, pussy stuff, all that dumb shit. Well, yeah. um, they didn't, they scolded me for crying, which was already kind of shitty because I'm a crybaby. If you, like, say, I'm mad at you for crying, what do I do? I cry harder. <laughs> so that would result in him, my dad, like, being like, I would be crying on the couch and my dad sitting over me going, stop crying this would just it would just and then i'd cry harder and, like, and he would be like no stop it was just that but my little brother or uh used to get extremely bad like genuinely ter he still gets them they're genuine like clinical migraines they're bad Ugh. well he would get a migraine he would be like oh my head hurts and my dad would be like it's fine well then it would get worse because my dad would not give him tylenol like not even basic shit that's ridiculous and he's little I, like he, he was always small for his age but he was like a little dude just a uh -huh. sweet little cherub baby. Um, this is your younger brother, correct? Cameron. Yeah, the little. Yeah. Well, he's okay. not little anymore. He's taller than me. What the fuck? Anyway, that is the way of boys. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he uh, he just this little cherub face, little sweetheart, and you know he'd be like, "Well, my head hurts," and my dad's like, "Well, you can't have no medicine. You're you just have to get over it." And he's like, "Okay, well then it would get worse because again, these are migraines. These are not headaches. Yeah. So these are he not would, normal. He would, you know." lie down in bed my dad like you need to get up and it's like you're not that you're not hurting that bit it would escalate till he started crying and then my uh -huh. dad would be like you're you know what's making your head hurt the fact that you're crying uh -huh. so he would then do the thing he does with me where he would stand over him and just shout stop crying to somebody who's having clinical migraines so he cries harder and he would cry so hard he barfed because he uh -huh. that he made his migraine worse and then it would get so bad, my dad's like, oh shit, he's really sick. I'm going to get in trouble for this. So then he would take him to the doctor. So the doctors co got convinced he had untreatable migraines. Because hmm. they just assumed my dad would have tried to give him Tylenol or something. So he mm -hmm. got suppositories. Oh no! Yeah. hundred Like that's like, and, it, he, and he had to take those. Oh. And it was like, this was completely unnecessary. All my dad had to do was give him a Tylenol. That was it. That was all my dad had to do, but he wouldn't, and we had to keep those on hand. Yeah. Because yeah. dad's greatest fear was like, oh shit, he can't go to his mom's house like this, then she'll see, and then she'll like write me a letter. Uh-huh. Oh god, the worst thing that can happen, a letter from my ex-wife! Oh, or she'll no. tell the judge! She'll oh tell no! Mm-hmm. God, I, I had to talk to so many child counselors, and it was so obvious when you'd switch and you'd get one that had a mom bias and one that had a dad bias. Yeah. Like, even when you're a kid, it was just like, ah, oh, fuck, not this again. <laughs> like, I got mm. this one that was clearly, like, on my mom's side. Uh, to be fair, I was also on my mom's side. Uh-huh. But even when you're a kid, you can sense, like, oh, you're trying to get me to respond a certain way. Mm-hmm. And my dad, and, and you're also a kid, it's like, I'm not incriminating my dad. Yeah, leave me alone. I'm going to get yelled at for that. And then we got this other one that we swapped to. We got one that my dad hired who was just like very clearly like, all right, let's get the dirt on your mom. And it's like, oh, God, no, I can I can sense this conversation and where it's going. So I would clam up. But one of my other brother was just like, oh, cool attention. And he would just make shit up. 
Oh, God. They, I would just sit there bug-eyed like, you do not know the repercussions. You do not know what you're going to do. Because like, he was younger, he genuinely didn't understand the consequences. He was just like, oh, cool, yeah. Yeah, Dad locked us in a... He would, like, exaggerate. Yeah, Dad locked us in a room and he didn't come back. I'm like, no, he didn't. Do not say that. That's going to end up in a court battle. You must stop, please. I, I would just, like, lose my marbles. Like, please, you don't know what... You, I know he's done bad shit, but you can't lie and say he doesn't feed us. Please, God. Mm, yeah. Please. And like I, just like I said, everyone, between a third and a quarter of all grown adults do not speak to their parents, period. So if that's you, don't think you're a freak. I should there speak to are, my mom. Well, yeah, but, you know, I'm just saying that in general, <laughs> like, there is a parental figure a third and a quarter of adults do not yeah. interact with, like, period. And so don't let them guilt you. Don't let them oh, tell no. you that you have no choice about it because you're related. Oh, that no, like, the most bullshit. freeing thing. Mm -hmm. Like, it sucked in the time. I'm not going to go in the whole story. It, the, the, the timing sucked, but the most freeing thing was the last time I hung up on my dad. I was like, oh, cool. I never have to answer his calls again. <sighs> right the fuck on right there with you. It's over long nightmare it's like you don't deserve to be fucking miserable folks like i don't know if if you've been like, god how sad is it if you've been waiting I mean... on like the iron circus geek show to tell you that but you know this you don't deserve to be miserable but at the same time it's when you're lonely it can be <clears throat> very it's very hard to like remove people from your life when you're lonely that's the other thing mm -hmm. sometimes people yeah. do endure and you can't really blame them i'm not speaking from experience or anything mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah anyway people it, sometimes people do endure just until they have a better family if that makes sense yeah, some people absolutely. can't exist like in a bubble yeah on an absolutely island. there's going to be different personality types where there are people who just they they need you know that in their life oh and i, I guess stepped in the what? bucket <laughs> oh no but yeah uh i i credit a lot again to the way i was raised where it was like very isolating and i remember when matt and i matt sheridan who's in the chat right now hello dear uh we're we're first dating and he just like say things like you know how when your mom xyz and like no i don't <laughs> like, that, that is, yeah it's like you know how your parents will, like get on the floor and play with you no <laughs> i don't i don't know that it's like, I see shit like that on well, TV, but that's TV and TV is fake. TV is, also has Godzilla and Ghostbusters. It is interesting, though. Like, the older I get, the more I realize that, oh, God, I totally inherited that from my parent, like, my dad. I don't like him, but he rubbed off. Oh, my. Because, like, oh, yeah. I eat in the car. I eat while driving. My mom commented, like, how can you drive one-handed and eat? I don't understand. Like, you do it effortlessly. I'm like, and I thought, oh, oh, my dad did that. Like, all the fucking time. That's why I do that. What the fuck? Okay, well. Yeah. My dad made me an unsafe driver. <laughs> yeah. And there are a lot of Eating people who live... Eating hot dogs and swerving on the road. <laughs> there are a lot of people who live to what I consider a uh, polite way to put it. A unexamined life. Um, the, the, an uninterrogated life. Where they do pick up a lot of the things that their parents did. <laughs> Abby says no man is an island. Some guy probably. Yeah, it's like <laughs> they pick up a lot of things that the people who raised them, whoever was, and their yes, the bucket was from the latex. Did. It's got dried latex in it, and it, it is a weird sensation to put your foot in it. And when people talk about how kids are resilient, that's like a favorite thing people say. Um, kids are resilient. What they mean is, children have no experience, therefore, literally any circumstance, yeah, can be interpreted as normal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because they don't have it's the same reason that really scummy dudes like one of the hallmarks of a genuinely scummy dude is a dude who wants to exclusively date like 17 18 19 year olds because they do not have the experience to tell them what is a normal relationship you know they take advantage of the naivete and kids don't have the experience oh, they yeah. have that set of parents and that is the way their parents have always been so they don't know that it's weird that mom does x and dad oh does my y God. yeah like it's there's so much stuff you don't realize is normal until like you just have a you, you're out of that situation and like i remember the first convention i ever went to it was a road trip with two high school friends and i was just like wait you're just going they're like yeah come along it like took so much uh God, it was in high school. It took so much energy to like convince my them to let my family to let me go. And I went, and they were like, they said bye to their mom in the hotel, and then we just went to this convention center. And I was just sitting there like, 
Why are we here unattended? I was like losing my mind. Like, where are your parents? Why are we unattended? What is? And they were like, oh yeah, I got some money. Like, you have money? I was losing my mind. Like, they were actually buying me stuff, and I'm like, like, oh, you didn't bring money? I'm like, no, I didn't bring money. I don't have money. What are you talking about? It's like, oh, I got an allowance. Like, fuck. And I was just like losing my mind at an anime convention. Yeah. But I did wear my mini moose hat and it was very good. Yeah. I made it myself. Back H, Spike, your experiences are not universal, nor oh, yeah. would I ever claim them to be. Oh, absolutely. Nor so would I, ever I claim want to them tie to be. this back to comics. Oh, mm -hmm. well, remember comics, everyone? Yeah! <laughs> yeah. I remember um, How do you think all this weird shit has affected your you as a cartoonist? I mean, there's or just a lot work. of there's a lot of functioning alcoholics in my work. Um, <laughs> yeah um i'm trying to think right now like i think okay this is going to be a reach so you're going to have to <laughs> forgive me on this one but i now that I'm, I'm trying to think about it the comic i'm doing right now despite all appearances it's you like head around, injuries i do like head injuries that is the thing that happens a lot in my comics and yes and the minimus hat was from invader zim it was in that time period <laughs> yes that that yeah. that puts a date on that oh yeah but um like I do have a preoccupation and it has come up in my work a lot of uh, people who just are abandoned in various ways. And I don't know if it's coming through in the comic I'm doing right now. It's only 40 pages in, but uh, if you read it and I'm going to, I'm going to try and be disciplined. I'm going to try and not spoiler the shit out of stuff. Cause I don't want to do that. Um, if they, they, they live under a fucking tree. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Uh, they they clearly they don't have a house, and they seem to be alone under this tree, and they're literal fucking criminals. So you can you can interpret a lot of things about that, and we're gonna we're gonna cut it off there so I don't <laughs> say some stuff I don't want to say because it hasn't happened yet, and. For a long time, a comic has been in production called Lucas and Odessa, which is about a a girl who has spent her youth being something I observed a lot in the suburbs I grew up in, which is like super duper overachiever kind of thing. And so she went to the special magnet school for the performing arts, and she was one of those kids who would get up at 5 a.m., get in an hour of ballet, go to school with her leotard under her clothes get out of school, get in another hour of ballet. And then three days a week, she would get in three hours of ballet in the evening. And then on the weekend, she'd get in eight hours of ballet because that was the idea. She was going to be a professional <laughs> ballerina. And this You're is like she the found... Keeblers. <laughs> and... Right. <laughs> They're Keebler elves. The Keebler elves. They're fucking Keebler elves. They are Keebler elves. You did it, Spike. <laughs> This That's is your so gritty cool. reboot of the Keebler Elves. Oh my, oh my fucking god! I'm take so it to the take. We have look. Hey, we have an angle when we go to the licensing please, convention. Please enjoy my gritty reboot of the Keebler Elves. Thank you. We have our angle. Let's go. Let's. Who who owns the Keebler Elves? I have a fucking heart attack. I love that. I'm looking this up. Who owns the Keebler Elves? Who oh my owns god. the Keebler I said that. Elves? I Emma Gilray, thank you so okay, much. Okay, uh, they are a sub. Keebler is a subsidiary of. Oh god, I'm gonna die. Oh, I love that. Whoa, Nisco, right? Um, oh, the Kellogg God. Company sold Keebler to the Italian-owned Ferrero in 2019. Oh, the people who make the gross hazelnut chocolates. Yeah. Yeah. So the Ferrero International or Ferrero Group owns Keebler. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think Ferrero will be at the license? <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah there's but lucas and Odessa, uh she is basically long story short there are simply body types where you're just never gonna join like the new york ballet company you're just not no matter what and it turns out odessa is stuck with one of those body types and when you are at that age a lot of this is based on observation um your first big failure can feel like the end of the world and if odessa had a mom who gave a shit <laughs> and had a dad who gave a shit Maybe she would have had someone to turn to when she was going through what was clearly the ah, thing she had. Ferrero will not be at the licensing expo. Who has aimed her, she has aimed her entire life at this dream that is now clearly not going to happen. But she has no one. And part of that is her mom has gotten remarried and she has married up. 
which means she now lives in a McMansion in the suburbs and she has had a child with her new husband. And a not insignificant portion of this is Odessa is biracial and very clearly biracial. It's not subtle at all. And her mom is white and her stepdad is white and the new baby is also white, obviously. And she is feeling very much like a mistake her mother has made that there is no polite way to get. No, the Rice Krispie elves and the Keebler elves are distinct. Yeah. The Keeblers live in the tree. The Rice Krispie elves are, I don't know. Vagabonds. They live in a factory. They're vagabonds. They live in the Rice Krispie factory. Oh my fucking god! They're like the keepers that way. I'm gonna die. But yeah, I um, mean, th- you're, people. This is it for forever. I'm sorry. People being abandoned and fucking up. I guess that's that's a that's a that's a recurrent theme. Just people kind of being on their own and trying to figure shit out and doing terrible things. I don't think that's a Lucas and Odessa. Well, I get- yeah i mean doing... she does uh make some bad decisions but oh, um, oh some very bad decisions. Yeah. <laughs> some no there are multiple poor. ones named keebler keebler's the last name what is the matter don't make me look this? i'm looking this up You're i'm looking this up worse what is happening this is the worst chat ever i'm looking this up Oh my god. Anyway, I know it's like uh, Ernie or something. The key I would like to thank everyone in my chat who is not in the worst chat ever. Uh, <laughs> oh god. They're not going off on Keebler elves. Um, yeah. Ernie no, Keebler I... is the old guy. Apparently there's a Friar Tuck. There's a there's JJ a Keebler. That's his name. <laughs> there's Tuck. a Ma Keebler. There's a young Elmer Keebler. There's a Fast Eddie Keebler. Oh my There's a few god. Keeblers. It's a last name. Oh my god. I'm I'm gonna fucking screenshot this. Look. Um, <laughs> just so gonna talk. No, lots of them have names. <sighs> I don't know a lot, anyway. okay? <laughs> but apparently I have a pocket saved for Keebler elf knowledge. I don't know why. Oh my god. Uh so uh I did mention that there's a lot of functional alcoholics in my comic. When's yes. MasterCard uh, going to come for the Keebler elves? <laughs> <laughs> uh, as soon as they start fucking, that's when they'll come for them. Uh, oh, then, uh, then um, I have a lot of people who are being held to a certain <laughs> type of appearance um, that they are disinterested in keeping up. Hmm. Uh, Beams. Themes. Gross. Uh, Gross. And, and probably partly why I like werewolves is they are a monster who, um, whether how accepted they are in society, is dependent on how well they are behaving in society. Um, and when they are monstrous, it is because they are too messy and wild and whatever. Mm. Uh, and they got they get told you gotta rein that in. Um also uh so, I just a, the- a theming. Just what we can just sort of call gross boys. Definitely a theme of mine. Just what, how does that uh, how does that uh <laughs> tie back to your upbringing, Spike? I don't yeah. know. I how are oh, you no, pre- I do know. I oh do no, know. oh no, I do know. The okay. origin story, the dark are, history. Fucking no, it's so fucking basic. Don't don't even. It's Kurt Cobain. <laughs> See? Yeah, Kurt Cobain. See? Yeah. It's not impressive at all. Everyone seriously I, um I my... thought you were cool. You're very pedestrian, <laughs> no, Spike. I'm extremely How could you? Sub- I'm suburban as shit. All I want you to do I never is thought you were go basic, to Google Spike. and search Kurt Cobain. And a billion photos will come up and I would just like everyone to take note that that particular face was fucking everywhere at the exact moment my libido was coming online for the first time. I'm just over here crying like, but Spike, I thought you were like other girls. No, I'm basic as shit. <laughs> I'm basic as shit. There is something about his face. The earth dirt bag. The, the thing about, about his, his face, Spike, the thing about his face is that it is hot. Uh. <laughs> it really is. It really is. <laughs> Matt is, co- Matt clocked you for it. He knew. And he is the holotype of the gross boy. Just look at the photos and tell me I'm wrong. I defy you. 
He is gross boy holotype. And that fucking set me on a path. And I love you, Matthew Sheridan. <laughs> and even with fucking Iris and Angel, Amanda can attest to this. This is factual. When I give Amanda the scripts for Iris and Angel, I will go into detail about how ratty Angel's hoodie is. And how okay, I was about stay. to, I was, I was, my, the gears were tightening in my body. I was ready to jump to Angel's defense like I've had to do before. <laughs> but you're just talking about his hoodie. Okay. Yeah, his hoodie is ratty and he doesn't shave. And it's That's, like, yeah, then okay, you like fucking okay. Google Kirk. He has the like, aesthetic. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Last time he you tried a... to call him a garbage boy and I lost my mind. <laughs> no, how dare you call this dork. man? He is, He's a he good is, boy. He is ratty because I just like ratty gross boys. It's just a thing. I, I can't do anything about it. I'm Jet X. It happens. No, Matt whatever. is not gross. Matt is very well kept. <laughs> oh my God. That is such a lie. I've seen him. He is not Have a garbage seen... boy. Matthew, Matthew, I'd love you to, to describe for the chat the hoodie you are wearing right now. I don't even have to wonder. The fucking nasty, ruined holes everywhere. Okay, well, if wearing. you're just horny for hoodies, that's one thing. <laughs> I'm Jet X, of course I'm horny for hoodies. <laughs> no, it's just... I'm not going to go through all my themes. All I will say is specifically for Starry Night, the if I could sum that comic up as a single short quick concise theme i've said it before but it the theme is closure ain't shit <laughs> oh that is that's a lesson everybody needs to learn that is the th ultimate theme of start there's a lot of stuff in there but mostly it's closure ain't shit you cannot make you cannot ask for closure from people who like don't care about you they can't they they don't have the capacity to give it to you and yeah. you have to learn to live without yeah i actually one of the people i again i'm going to talk about youtube again there is a person i really really like and strongly recommend on youtube called theremin trees and theremin trees is a therapist who makes really elaborate videos about just therapy topics and one of the things he said in a recent one is there is this pervasive and patently untrue belief that you need the participation of the abuser or wrongdoer for full closure. You need to like consult them or include them in the process to leave something behind, which is absolutely not fucking true. You do not need someone else to participate in fucking resolving an issue in yourself. You don't. Well, the other thing is sometimes it will not be resolved and you just have to be okay with that. Also that. Also some that's kind of more I, life is that's life more, is a mess. That's more Starry yeah. Nights thing. It's very yeah. You cannot get closure from people who are not willing or capable to give it to you, and yeah. you just have to be okay with that. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, that's one of my favorite bits in BoJack Horseman is when he goes to apologize to his friend with cancer in the first season, uh, and his friend's like, "I don't forgive you," and it's like, yeah. "What?" And he's like, "No." I don't yeah. forgive you. Fuck yeah. you. You don't get closure. I'm going to die of cancer. Fuck you. Uh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's 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 true. I mean, there's a lot of people I think who it's kind of media is media is is it's there's a lot of fantasize and again, I don't think it's wrong for this. And sometimes you can reconcile with people, but there is a the fantasy that one day they'll know what they did wrong and they will no. feel bad and they will apologize. And I think oh, yeah. clinging to that idea is really hurtful. And it just, it's like, sorry, you really yeah. just got to set the, this box on the ground and leave. Yeah. The thing that I'm talking about, the theremin trees thing is, uh, he talks about how there are people out there now that sort of the ambient knowledge of therapy speak, you know, if we can call it that for the sake of things that have been like absorbed by yeah. osmosis. Yeah, yeah. Like just people understand certain therapy terms that once upon a time, unless you went to a therapist, you didn't, you wouldn't know what people were talking about. Abusers have weaponized therapy speak and used it to self-serving ends. Like example, let's say there's a couple and one of them goes to pay the electric bill and the check bounces and they check the account and the account is empty and they go to their partner and they go, what the fuck? Our account's empty. Where's the money? And the person turns and goes, I bought a dirt bike with it because I'm practicing self-care. Like that is not self-care. <laughs> That's not self-care. What you're doing is not self-care. That's you being a selfish prick. Well, but you know enough about... Yeah 
therapy speak. I, th- I that think that the can... terms that have definitely been um, yeah. co-opted, uh, especially by abusers, are concepts like gaslighting and who is oh, gaslighting who and, and about what. And 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 when someone is quote unquote toxic, you gotta you gotta oh cut all the toxic. Oh my god! Oh, obviously, I'm saying too much right here. But Matt and I have this joke now because one of our jokes is everybody who doesn't make it in comics eventually calls comics toxic and when we see it like in the wild we just turn to each other and go wow every single one of your girlfriends was crazy every single one what are the (laughs) odds nine crazy women all in a row it's definitely not you i i really appreciate there is a donald glover joke where he talks about um, when men break up with a woman, they're like, oh, she was crazy. Yeah. Um, and he's like, women don't do that because if a woman was dating a crazy man, she'd be dead. They don't break up. She's dead. Um, yeah. 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 And the whole sort of everybody is toxic. It's like everybody, everybody's toxic. Every single person that you met is toxic. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> Every single one. And I think. <sighs> That subject, I think people have a hard time just like some like just not like mythol like taking the concept of not liking someone and not like mythologizing it or something yeah. or making it more like sometimes I just don't like the way a person tells jokes. Yeah, and there's actually a book about this called Conflict Is Not Abuse. And there are people who are very quick to label other people abusers. And it's like, no, you had an argument about Pokemon. <laughs> it's not abuse it's conflict or like they had a legitimate criticism of a thing you're doing wrong um and you not wanting to uh change means you have to label them as toxic exactly because again it's one of those weaponizing terms from therapy things again where it's like if someone is labeled an abuser that immediately sort of like casts in someone's mind oh this person needlessly and viciously and they wronged you and, and and they did it for no reason at all like it, it's you kind of taking control of the narrative and being like yes well my abuser said and it's like oh wow oh wow your abuser oh shit you know like oh okay anyway watch out for that folks also abu- <laughs> you can't oh, control yeah. me yeah <laughs> that's true i cannot i cannot but yeah uh theremin trees great guy cool i i just remember one time having an argument um with a person who will remain nameless who was very upset that i would not own a purse <laughs> um, and um I the whole argument I was just thinking why am I having this argument if I wanted to have this argument I'd call my mom like yeah yeah uh yeah uh my parents would bribe me to carry a purse at formal functions so (laughs) my parents didn't have the money so they could not uh successfully bribe me I just I would refuse to carry it and they're just like fine if we pay you will you carry it I was like yeah i'll take your friend's wedding sure i don't know why this is so fucking important to you but okay i guess this is a boomer thing i will never understand i cannot imagine bribing my own child no it is it is not a boomer thing it is a (laughs) trad wife um you are not feminizing yourself correctly thing um because it is not just a boomer thing and when i say uh, purse everyone i don't mean like go on etsy and get a fucking handmade leather in the shape of a pachycephalosaurus with an Eda bag window purse. I don't mean that. I Thank mean God like I have permission. <laughs> I don't mean a cool, I'm on the floor again. A cool, interesting bag that you've picked out for yourself because you love it so much. I don't mean that. I mean my parents literally trying to shove like black patent leather clutch in my hand. That was empty. Totally empty. Uh, I am also including those things. Um, <laughs> like, because, and this is because it's me. Like, yeah. I, I know myself. <laughs> I know I'm not going to carry that thing. Um, if you buy me anything resembling that, it's going to sit in the bottom of my closet until I throw it away a year later. Um, 
uh, there is like there there is no purpose to me owning a purse. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to own a purse, great. You do you. Like yeah. follow your bliss. Um, but do not insist that I must also um, yeah. form and this gender is why in yeah, Kel's comics, uh, they exist in a universe where purses are extinct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is kind of like, I think this is a sort of an experience that I've begun referring to uh, as sexism light and uh, just mentally like by myself, because it's something that I think a, a lot of people in sort of like the general 10 years on one side, 10 years on the other side, uh, people who were AFAB can kind of identify with, where if you stepped out of line, you weren't told, you know, we were raised in kind of like this era where outright fucking shut up your girl wasn't as common but at the same time there was still sort of sexism light which is you know sit with your legs together wear the dress to church carry the clutch mm -hmm. you know don't cut your hair and maybe the more radical shit is something like you know um don't do get a better grade than the boy you like in class Man, which i was like lucky that. right I my my it, it was never about smarts it was always about presentation like i yeah, said my mom cared a lot about the appearance of things um i i was told when i moved to portland um if i didn't shave my legs i would never get a boyfriend and oh, then i told yeah. my i told my mom it's portland no one cares mm -hmm. um like literally zero people in portland care um yeah <laughs> Yeah, shaving is a big, big thing. Oh, you still, oh me and my so... mom had one of those conversations. She's like, "No one's gonna date you if you don't shave." I'm like, "That," and I just <laughs> it was it was a stupid thing to do. I was like, "That hasn't stopped me from getting laid before." And she like covered her hands with ears, like, "No, no, yeah. no, not this, no." Yeah, I'm like you invited this. This is your fault. Yeah, I I just it was one of those things where I was as a teenager like unbelievably in a quiet way i couldn't articulate super offended by the fact that i was being informed i had to shave half my body like why i looked like i, I was i had to have to like revise because i originally interjected saying oh i was lucky like no i mean i guess that i had did not have the greatest time but at least in that respect i was lucky the boys got it. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I was yeah, kind of, in, in terms of, like, what I wanted to do, like, there were multiple times when I had, like, three piercings. It was so weird. Like, I had three piercings in each ear, but I couldn't go to a friend's house. And I would have, like, a boy cut buzz cut. Mm -hmm. And they didn't care. It was so weird. Like, the things that were mm -hmm. okay and that they, they didn't care about, like, expression like that. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I could go to school with orange hair. That, that was fine. Mm. Here, here's here's one I got almost every day growing up. You'd be so pretty if you wore makeup. Yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. would. What, what's the what, what, what? <laughs> I know, right? A lot of boys would be real. Most people cute would. What's makeup. your point? That's what oh, makeup yeah. does. Yeah, it's that's its job. It's literally its reason for existing, making people pretty. <laughs> but yeah, it's I've never been with a dude who has given half a shit. I don't shave. Like period. And quite frankly, if they did, I consider that an awesome litmus test. If it's you can't a great way. It, it's a, yeah. Yeah. One of the things that really gets me about people who actually let phrases like, if you don't do X, boys won't like you, like fall out of their mouth. It's all like, no, if I don't do X, the boys who expect me to do X won't like me. And that's fine with me. Yeah. I don't want those boys to like me. <laughs> uh, Yeah. If um, the fucking deal breaker for you is I have a mohawk, I have a pierced face, I don't shave my you legs. You probably weren't compatible to begin with. Yeah, then yeah. we weren't ever yeah. fucking going anywhere anyway. Uh, yeah. Uh, what I think is really funny, I it was the the brief time I was trying online dating, um, mm -hmm. before giving up. Um, <laughs> is it's a lot of work. Um, I had a good I'm glad experience. I, don't have date. I can tell you that right now. Uh, I I also uh, suspect I might be aromantic. Um, so That's that was okay. just a lot of effort for shit that I did not super care about and wasn't really invested in. Fair um, enough, but enough. 
I did appreciate that OK Cupid was like, "Do you shave your legs? It is a deal? If it is it a deal breaker if the guy wants you to shave your legs? Like all these little things. Like they ask you the question, but also ask you, is this a deal breaker if your person can't accept that you do this? Mm-hmm. Um, like our tattoo is a deal breaker. Like, <laughs> um, and but then some of them were questions like." what's bigger um the earth or the sun what the fuck and you had to answer you had to pick one what the fuck? um and if you These and are- so you could say if someone doesn't answer the same way as you it is a deal breaker what the fuck Okay, here's the thing. Um, what Ke- because Spike doesn't use these pr- apps. Um, what Kelly's describing yeah. are completely optional, like little uh, preference quizzes you can kind of do. Well, what's been yeah. on the earth? Or the I sun? think that's to uh, weed Some out people, people who don't, don't know, know the answer. Yeah, <laughs> and that might be a deal breaker. You not being in a position where you would know that. Uh, that's absolutely a deal breaker. Holy shit! I mean, oh yeah, God. for some people it might not like, be. So- some of these things they had not occurred to me, but I was like, "Yeah, if someone doesn't know that the sun is bigger than the earth, yeah. then um, that's yeah. a deal breaker." It fucked me up when I watch a let's play and the person reading dialogue pronounces something incorrectly. So just like, oh my fucking like, god, not knowing. I mean, the dating earth apps are not. okay. I met my the last yeah. girlfriend I had on uh, OKC, and that was a mm-hmm. completely pleasant experience. Mm, this yeah. this is why I was just saying like it was that's a lot of effort for a thing I don't really care about. Oh, I um, put no yeah. effort yeah. into it. I basically like yeah was scrolling, saw a picture of her with a word on her shirt, and I sent a, a joke about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, and she I, said, "Oh, um, really?" And then we hung out at the mall. At the end. Uh, <laughs> then we hung out at the mall. The, the mall oh, is the my go. Rest. The mall is my go-to place to meet people I meet online. No, that's a good choice. That's a good choice. It's nice big, big it's place. crowded, there's lots of shit to go and do, so, like, you can just walk around in the AC and, like, talk and look at stuff, and you can eat and get snacks, yeah. and then when you're done, you will just... You probably didn't park near each other. You can just hide. Yeah, you probably would be really hard to kidnap in a mall. Pretty much. Um, no, pretty much. Also, yeah. it's easier to, like, it's also easier to break the ice for me, because, like, you can go in all, like, we went to the anime store, and we, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, d- do you like anime? Oh, yeah. And then we talked about that. And then we walked by, like, the baseball cap store, and that inspired uh, conversation. So, um, I read Aziz Azari's book, Modern Romance, which uh-huh. is all about how dating is different across the world, and but also how it's changed with the times. Uh-huh. Um, and a lot of, and he surveyed a lot of people. Um, and one of the things that he talks Let about is people com- complain yes. that like first dates are boring. But then he asked people what their like first dates are, and it's like going to get a cup of coffee. And it's like, well, yeah, that's a boring. That that first date is boring because it's uh, hard to like get someone's. It, it's like, is this a date or a job interview? Is kind of the vibe for a lot of these coffee Mm -hmm. dates um so his like is so if you find that you're going on a lot of really boring dates uh one of his tips which i did follow and the date that i went on after following this advice did go better than other ones um but basically um he said go to something that is out of the ordinary um so like the I, one of the guys that I met on an online dating thing, uh, we went to the zoo. Um, oh. And uh, that was a much more pleasant experience than uh, the coffee shop dates. Um, I'll bet. But yeah, like, yeah, because it's like, yeah, maybe you might not be compatible, but you'll get to like look at the penguins some more random tangents you'll get like more random tangents and maybe like the what animals gets the excited person excited like mm-hmm. uh, another reason be... the zoo and, and the uh, mall can be very helpful for gauging people is if if you have a certain opinion about children doesn't matter where which way it goes you can see their reaction to children in real time yeah so if yeah. you don't like children you can and you see them like Ugh, you know oh thank god but if yeah, you do like was, children, you see them and go, "Ugh, I hate all these kids." It's like, okay then. 
when I was scripting uh, Iris and Angel for you, Amanda, I actually had to go and like Google shit about like, okay, so how do people do it nowadays? <laughs> like, how do how do they do the date thing? And the only reason the I'm not thing? still trying to date on like the apps is just because yeah. I've had the idea in my head that any day now I'm gonna move to a different city or state, and that keeps yeah. getting delayed. Yeah, uh, hopefully yeah, not I mean, much longer. The and then I'm like, well, I'm not gonna try if I don't know where I'm gonna yeah. live. But uh, well, and and. This, this is part of Kel is probably aromantic and this is why dating is too much effort is even like the nice dates I went on, like I would forget to text the guy back for days on end and like just Good. forget about their existence. Um, so, it, it just like, depends. Like I, like I said, that the, the last date, I, the last person I ended up dating don't put Kurt Cobain in the jet in our chat. That popped up right in front of my face. No, don't. No. No. He's cute. Look at his face. No, I'm looking at it and it's not cute. Leave me alone. He's so adorable. You can say that and I believe that you feel that way, but you can't make me say it. Look at his great big. I'm looking at it. He looks like he like he's he's worried he's in trouble. Like I'm gonna find the piss drawer. <laughs> yeah, and he did it. <laughs> the piss drawer. Fuck! Oh my god, yes. I'm gonna find the piss drawer. Um. <laughs> Kurt Cobain jump scare. Honestly, yes, because I had Discord our our private. No more. <laughs> That's. That's just the guy from Nickelback. Leave me alone. Oh my god. Leave, leave me in peace. I'm going to close the window. He's adorable. Give, I believe that you think that. But yeah. And that's, I value that, your opinion. Matt, you know why I like you. <laughs> you know why I like you. That's why I like you. That's why I fucking like you. Leave him alone. <laughs> Stop dragging him into this. Oh my fucking god. I'm a part of like the Matt advocacy group. Leave him alone. Never. Let him never. know peace. Never. Matt will never know peace as long as he's married to uh, me. Yeah, he knows who he married. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, but uh, yeah, so um, uh, Spike, if you do have interest in how modern people are dating, uh, mm. Modern Romance is an interesting book. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I what I was saying before Spike decided to derail me with her gross well no he's my not gross, gross. Here's gross the thing, he's not gross and I don't think he looks bad I just I don't know why I'm being showed him that's the well, thing it's like why are you showing this to me he's got the gun out um well the thing is when I say gross boys what I don't mean is like no you know, I know what you like yeah. I'm just saying I don't know why you're showing him to me because it's always nice to look at Kurt Cobain Spike I think you it's cannot. funny that Okay, Spike, I think it's funny that you're all like, oh, I love gross boys. Yeah. Um, but you gave me a hard time for liking Gambit. Um, well, Gambit isn't who, gross. He's slimy. It's different. Uh, <laughs> I, I disagree. These are like, yeah, this uh, is a spectrum. This is a gross boy spectrum. A gross boy spectrum. Yes. I, I feel like Kurt Cobain and Gambit have a lot of overlap. Um, uh, that is a sinner talking. I do not believe in your sins. So, no. No, Kurt Cobain and Gambit do have no overlap. They have zero overlap. He's a sensitive they... baby. He's a sweet, sensitive baby. He's a who, musician. Who hopes you don't find the piss drawer. Who hopes you don't find the piss drawer. He's afraid he'll get the belt. <laughs> the piss drawer. Yeah, Gambit this is doesn't quite care. A good narrative you're you're making about <laughs> Kurt Cobain. No, um, it's just because of his expression. Spike, I mean, Kel, have you seen the piss drawer? <laughs> I have. Okay. Oh my god. I just, I just, yeah. I just wanted to make sure. But yeah, that everyone I, knows. I, what I, in fact, yeah. I'll link the chat. Yeah, everybody, everybody, you're in for a delight. Just you're in for I, a delight. I, uh, I at Emerald City, I was sharing with Blue dudes that I think are attractive, um, and Blue was trying to piece together what is Kel's type, um, and the answer is um, floppy hair is uh, a big part of it, um, and but also um, 
it, it, if it looks like maybe I'd catch an STD from them, I probably <laughs> think they're attractive. <laughs> Wow. That's how I describe. That's how I describe Gambit, the, the X Men most likely to give you an STD. <laughs> Absolutely, and then never call you again. But no, I you don't like, know. <laughs> Gambit does not fucking call his one night stands. Period. He doesn't. You know he doesn't. You can't sit there and tell me he does. I'm sorry, I don't believe it. No, he got married. No, oh, they all eventually get married. He's been married multiple I'm times. I'm afraid of both of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's been married multiple times? Like, that's a fucking point in his favor. That means <laughs> that he has called them back enough times to get married. That's not what that even means. Even if that they did eventually needed... get divorced. <laughs> that means he needed a name change, citizenship, or a fresh bank account. That's what that means. <laughs> But no, I I just I, I I like I like boys that'll let me kick them. So you know, Kirk Cobain is that face. I'm afraid of both of you. We we've, we've got over this where uh, I want to fight. Um, <laughs> yes. No, there is a thing. Spike I used wants to say. a boy to bully. Kel wants a boy to fight. One of th- there was this thing I used to say. There but was a fair guy, fight, a good spar. There was this guy I used to work with. Forgive me if I'm like going over old territory. There's this guy I used to work with at Pearl named Terrence, and uh, he was younger than me. And there is a vibe certain boys give off, and the vibe says, and this is what I've been saying for decades. The vibe says, chase me around the parking lot shove me over and then sit on me and terrence gave off that vibe and fucking with terrence wherever you are out there terrence i'm so sorry no she couldn't even make a nickname for you he loved it he loved it spike at least make a nickname for your victims and yeah you gotta change his name to protect (laughs) his uh his honor his dignity but he was fucking great i love terrence bullying him was fun because he loved being bullied it was great (laughs) <laughs> anyway how you doing matt i love you <laughs> you know i'm someone who enjoys a bit of bullying i also like to be bullied by hot girls but if they ever talk like but then i'm like what if they talked about me the way spike talks about me? Well, oh no, no maybe that my was... feelings are different no maybe i just i don't know how he regarded you scare me, me. He, got, he got really I frightened yeah and stuff when i talked to him which fucking just egged me on so um <laughs> I want to be bullied by a ten foot tall woman. That's it. Uh, <laughs> That's all uh, the, the new thing at conventions is people walking around with signs that say I will step on you for five dollars. Yeah. Some people just want to be stepped on, and that is a healthy and normal impulse. It is. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, we have I'm glad we can find two and a half. I'm hours. glad we finally came to a consensus. It took yeah. us two and a half hours, but we finally arrived at the conclusion. We've been circling this entire time that it is okay to be stepped on. It's okay. It's, it's we a got there in the end. It's a beautiful choice. It was a test Don't of our it. friendship. Don't let anybody make anybody make you feel bad about it. If That's what the show's about, on, right? Get stepping on, on people. There. If you want people to step on you, get out there and get stepped on live the dream don't let no get out there and you. lie on the ground lie on the ground oh that's true you just lie in the parking get lot get prostrating wait. <laughs> wait just lie in the parking lot and eventually someone will come over and just slowly look you up and down and go what you doing down there <laughs> and then you'll get married no Damn you'll get it. married Damn to the no, you'll get married to the one who just goes ah i instinctively understand it just the, puts the boot square in your chest and just bears down a little bit. <laughs> That's what you want from life, everyone. Everybody. So every, everybody. Universal Maybe? impulse. Universal this is a fine impulse. generalization. I'm okay with it. Yes, this is 100% true for every living human being. Get stepped on. Get stepped on. Every single one. Okay, we should probably end it here. It has been two and a half hours. No. Yeah. Yes. I'm have- almost done with my page. Can we go a little bit longer? <laughs> no, because I want to quit because I have work to do. I also have things to Niche. do. Yeah. So, everybody. Hi, I'm Spike. You can follow me at iron underscore Spike, just like it says under my name right there. If you have not already, please like this 
uh, Geek Show stream and subscribe to Iron Circus Comics. I, if you go to my Twitter, Iron underscore Spike, you can read the comic I've been talking about, which against my better judgment is called Blacata. We are 41, maybe 42 pages in. It's all in one thread, so it's easy to read in one sitting. Thank you very much. And remember, we have a crowdfund <clears throat> that is ending Friday after this one. Did you make a pin tweet? A pin tweet for the crowdfund? Yes. No, for a... Uh... No, not yet. Well, well, you well know right what? now the crowdfund is the pin tweet. This has um, been the most disappointing character yeah. arc in any anime. <laughs> but everyone, please check out the Lizard Prince and other South American stories. It is the final, 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 final Cautionary Fables and Fairy Tales collection. We would love to get it printed in Spanish. That's really on an outside chance right now, but I believe we can do it. We have a week left. Please spread the word and back if you haven't. Go to ironcircus.com. You'll see the link there. Uh, I am Kel McDonald, and I make comics that you can read at kelmcdonald.com. Uh, I also stream at twitch.tv.com. Um, and I have a fan discord where you can hang out and watch werewolf movies with me in October. Um, if you want access to that, you just got to hit me up on one of the many places that you can contact me. Um, right now I'm going to post a link, uh, I know. It, <laughs> uh, on my Twitch for people who are watching my Twitch, um, rather than, uh, the Iron Circus stream. Uh, cause I'm drawing. So that's visually more interesting. Wow. Than, uh, wow. yeah. No, uh, RP and YouTubers are lovely. How dare you? Uh, uh, Amanda did a great job. Um, and, uh, so, uh, hold on a bit. Uh, so yeah, you can also find me on Twitter at Kel Mc Kelhound, which is spelt like Hellhound, but with a K. Um, and you can, um, also, uh, follow my Patreon, which is, uh, patreon slash kelmcdonald.com or whatever the, <laughs> you got there in the end, kind of. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, so I'm posting my discord in my chat. Um, I'm going to make a vinyl sticker that just says gross boys surrounded by sparkles. I'm sure it exists. Yeah. You can probably find it. Yeah. Uh, Amanda, where can ah, people find you? My ha Twitter handle is under my name. Uh, you can find my stuff from there pretty easily because I have a conveniently pinned tweet. Um, <laughs> uh, apologies for the show. I I, I I thought we were going to make a show about uh, comics and making of comics, but no. instead we did this. Uh, we, don't... we talked about childhood trauma. Uh... Luckily, it's free, so yes. you can't complain. Goodbye.